Alright, so. Catching up last time. Here we go. So previously, you guys had gone across Hexwell, gone to Adventus, found your orphanage, met up with Micah, realized that the orphanage was quite a horrible place, as well as meeting Gerald Storm, or Strom, excuse me. You went with his man, Grendridge, not Dennistine, or your guys' man, and has traveled all the way with you. Among doing so, you guys have now taken the orphans. You bought six of them, then brought one more with Micah. And now you guys have defeated individuals that you know were from the Crows, sent collecting what you believe to be orphans in the area, and have come to your estate looking to collect some tax. Uh, you guys refused and started a battle. And after winning, you guys let what looked to be the leader, Jameer Crestfall, leave after he divulged quite a lot of information about these orphans, thousands of them being taken to Audre and the Rocks, and things happening. I'm not quite sure what. Um, and as you guys were doing that, found that there were two more orphans located in the back of one of their caravans. And that's where we're picking up. So, okay, Gildor at this point is still digging a giant hole of old earth. And he's going to have Joey, the Thunder Beast, drag all the dead bodies into the giant. <clears throat> okay. So it takes just a couple of minutes, but you see it just. <laughs> and just starts grazing through, digging this large, almost like trough. And it starts just kind of taking its tail and just almost like bulldozing some of the bodies in. Um, and, and once they're in the bottom, they're using acid spray to okay. get their bones. Okay, so you just start burning the flesh off? Mm-hmm. All right, so about five, ten minutes go by, and you just smell this awful, rank, putrid. Well, you don't, but everybody else in the area. Can't smell either. Um, <laughs> just, oh, my God! Couldn't have done it farther away! He just It'll walks off. Don't be on soon. Well, you have your pile of bones. The flesh is kind of <laughs> sloshing off. You have like a, a bone porridge of human flesh. Um, but yeah, so what are the rest of you guys doing? Now, there were two orphans in the back. They were tied up, and that's where you guys kind of left off. You guys had looted some of the stuff. and I'm, I'm just saying, you guys had like looted the area for the most part, but that was the only thing that you guys kind of left how off on. How much bones do I get out of this pit? Um, I'll say you got like four human remains, like four... Full human body remains. Yeah, corpses worth. So, like, I don't know how many human body or human bones are in the body. Like, two hundred and something, aren't there? I mean, most of them are probably. Bones. Would you say it's a pile of bones? I'll say you got three piles, piles of bones. Of bones? I'll say you got three piles, three of, piles of bones. Of sure, bones. sure, three piles of bones. <laughs> okay. All right. Drink from my hands. All right. So you're getting drunk. Do we have uh, any kind of like storage? In- you have rooms. <clears throat> no, you have... Everything's been ransacked. So imagine, like, this estate has been empty for quite some time in Lawton. Even though maybe he's lived here, it's a not the best estate. And Lawton is by no means someone who is, like, going to defend himself. So anything that was once here, over however long it's been almost vacant, even though he may have been living here, everything's people been have, taken. People have fucking... Scavenge this yeah. shit. Yeah, I mean, like people have taken the pipes out of the wall. <laughs> there are no empty <laughs> the top chests. I mean, there's like a kitchen area where you How? see there's like some cabinets that weren't taken, but for the most part, there's nothing. How big is the chest that can hold yeah. the pounds? Oh, what? what do you How big are the chests? Well, I have these. They're like a pretty large <laughs> chest. It depends on what the 300 pounds would be. I've been carrying a chest. <laughs> Pick one. Because it was some like part of my starter stuff no, I don't for the multi one. It's no arm water, like arm water. There's a monster. Okay. Yeah. And it's a chest that can hold up to 300 pounds. It has a, some stuff in it as well for monster one. So that's why I was thinking, how big would a chest like that be? But on the side, I don't think I, I would have been. I mean, it's obviously got to be some magical chest. I'm not sure of the exact chest. I would just nope, say. It's just a chest. Well, it, 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 it's just a let's chest. just imagine a ripoff version of like a. Uh, uh, 
Oh god. Like holding is in a way. I mean, I can't assume that you would be lugging around yeah. something that huge. Like that's why. I, that's why. I asked. <clears throat> Maybe it just dangles from your ass this Which, whole time under your cloak that has been slapping onto the chest. back of your no, ankles. It's, it's just the chest it's, uh, that I got from whatever equipment. I don't know. We'll look it up. But well, I, I'm yeah, just gonna yeah, say you have a large yeah. chest. Okay. Um, you just see life just. <laughs> I don't know, but I got this, uh, <laughs> can hold up to 300 pounds. It's got a crowbar, hammer, 40 water, manacles. What are you, what are you doing with it? I mean, you want to store stuff with it? I guess. All right, so, I mean, you see this. You, I don't think I should be carrying yeah. around a chest that big. Not anymore, it's been yeah. wearing on you. <laughs> He's been yeah. on his back yeah. this whole time. That's why he gets money. all the of just completely ignored that this is happening. Yeah. Just like it's no. normal. That's what's been under your cloak this whole time. Like, Noah, yeah. like, you're like... Mm. But you have a fucking hunched back. <laughs> is that where parents sold it? Yeah. <laughs> I just carry so, around so, so technically, yeah, you have a chest now. The well, chest yep. is his back. Is it like a chest of holding? Like, I don't well, know. It is, uh, it's just, what, it's just, just, it's just a normal chest. chest. We're just going to say it's like a wooden chest that holds 300 pounds. <laughs> got a lock and now and a key. Sure, it's got a lock and key now. I made that up too. Here we go. Well, I mean, I figured it would have. Because yeah. it's his. Well, two long swords fit. Yep. <laughs> Easy. It's not long enough to hold two long swords. Yep. So it's about, let's say, four to five feet long. Yep. Actually, anybody, a long sword does is. Does anybody want a bow? Yeah, it's about. Uh, what kind of bow? I'm gonna write that I down. Mean, I have this a chest is. Nicely made bows, all the details. So you don't have like you have long ask. bow, short bow? I can't even you have imagine. to ask constantly. Is, is the bow he got a long bow or a short bow? A uh, long bow. Oh, then no, I think I need that. Yeah, I don't even they, they only had cross bolts or crossbows and longbows. Okay, yeah, you get you guys gathered. Oh, wait, crossbows like, are simple, aren't they? <clears throat> I think so. I can double check real quick. <laughs> what do you guys do? Is it though? There is. Because I'm, I'm gonna pick up I'm crossbow. Uh, okay. There are two children in this carriage. That are tied up. Nope. That are tied up. Yeah. So you guys kind of look in there. Arms and legs are bound, and around their mouth, it seems something has been put, and they seem to not really be very, uh, I'd say, awake. They are they are conscious, but it seems as if they're almost like drowsy in a way. You see them like somewhat like struggling, but very lightly. How old are they? Uh, you're not quite sure. Give me, I mean, give me a perception check if you're looking, or if you want to kind of climb up into the back of the caravan and investigate them, or if yeah. you just want to like get close enough to really. Yeah, I'll, I'll climb in here. Okay, so you, you climb up yeah. in there. I know crossbows were those. Yeah. They had light, heavy. Uh, well, both were white. Oh. They were too white. Again. Oh, oh, um, just by looking at them as you climb up, you see uh, one seems to be a uh, half elf. Male and another looks to be a female gnome. Um, the female has like black hair and the male has blonde hair. They seem to both be pretty young for even though they're age. Um, uh, I will. You wait, you good? And you, as you, you see their eyes kind of open and the female, her eyes, and even though she's still barely coming to, she. She starts kind of frantically, you know, like pulling back away from you. I will tend to be. Okay, so you, she just kind of, and as she does so, she kind of rocks in behind her. The male now kind of comes to, and him now, both of them like, hur, 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 hur. and then the male you look, and now you see he kind of pulls up his hands and his legs almost like, are you going to cut these? And he kind of starts looking around, noticing that no one else is there. Uh, sure, why not? Okay. So uh, I'll walk up, uh, and I'll cut. Uh, I'll cut the first one, the the girl free first. Okay, so you cut the gnome. She, she after what you do under her mouthpiece or let her do it. Okay, so you cut her hands free, and she, oh, and she's so drowsy. Thank you. Where are we? Just outside of Inventus. Oh, make it too far oh, then. Thank. God. Okay. Um. If it takes too long, I'll find it. 
All right, give me a second on that one. Uh, she looks at you. Who are you? The name is Aura. Your name? My name is Talia. Thank you. Uh, you look and she seems um, quite young, yeah. uh, probably for a dwarf, maybe in her young like 20s, 30s, um, so like teenage years compared yeah. to a human, but like not too old. Uh, I'd say just by looking at the half elf, you would know he's quite young as well, probably similar age. Um, she kind of looks at you, her clothes, okay, but somewhat tattered. It was, seems like there was a struggle. I was taken from the school, going back to my, my room, and I was... You see she almost like falls unconscious for a moment, and then she just kind of seems just exhausted. She almost like passes out, but doesn't say anything else. Uh, then I will go and free the half elf as well. You go over to the elf, mm -hmm. or the half elf, excuse me, and he kind of... A little bit more, um, I'd say spunk to him. Ugh. Thank you for the help. Um, did you kill them all? I, hearing some of the commotion and I felt At the caravan point, move. You're cackling. You were cackling as I'm gathering these bows. <laughs> like, I, I sound like a fucking... You're just in the back. Yeah, I'm Yeah. 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 So he basically just goes on to tell you that he, he was awake. He woke up during some big movement during the caravan, most likely mm -hmm. when Fuck This pushed it. Um, and that's kind of woke him up from whatever has been making him drowsy. Uh, now that he's sitting here, um, where are we going to go? So where are you from? Both from Albazine. She was a student, I think, but uh, I was just actually just sleeping in one of the alleys when I woke up and two men came and took me. So, the first question is, do you want to go back to sleeping out in alleys in Albrazine? Better than kidnapped, yes. The other question I have would be then, uh, how would you like a job? You're an inventor. Depends on what I might be doing, but maybe. What's in your skill set? Don't have much, but I could probably find something I can do. Okay. At this point, Grandridge, you hear in the background, God damn it, you know that fucking smells! Cover it up with something! Still laughing. <laughs> <laughs> you motherfucker. Uh, I don't believe I caught your name. Jordan. Jordan? Jordan. Okay. Nice to meet you, I'm Orem. Thank you once again, and um... Like I said, I may be able to help, and he kind of looks over and he's you now... Or she's almost nodding off completely. What about her? She's a student. I think she wants to go back to Alberzine. Likely. We have business in Alberzine here in the next couple days. So we'll probably take her with us. If you don't want to go back, if you want to see if you can find his place here in Inventus, so be it. My associates and I, we've recently come into some property. Needs some management. Are they nice? My associates? Yeah. They're nicer than the people who kidnapped you. Well, you killed them. Yeah. I hope so. Yeah. Uh, nice. You kill everyone that you don't agree with. So if I don't agree with you, would you kill me? No. Okay. We killed them because they kidnapping people and attempting to take what wasn't there the fact of the matter is is that you just see he just kind of leaning back doing the basic young kid like okay he's not listening anymore almost <laughs> it's starting to turn you out yeah. <laughs> yeah we're nice so 
What am I gonna get out of it though? If I stay here and I help you, a place to live. That's not an alley. He starts to like look outside the caravan a little bit. Can I meet you, associates? Sure. Kind of goes walking out very slumberly in a way, and at this point, Talia very drowsy, drowsily kind of. I was. I I'll pick up the gnome if necessary. Okay, so yeah, she, she's not basically waking up very well. She's just kind of like. <sighs> You pick her up and you guys start making your way out of the caravan. At this point, they see this cackling bone man hands over a pile of bones basically in the ground with a yeah, with a man standing next to you just like shaking his head, holding his nose. Um at this point, now you give me a survival check. Cause it's been probably about thirty minutes since he's walked off. Total? Yep, total. Um, you know kind of the direction he went off in, but, um, with it being, I'd say, snowing, kind of dark, you're not quite sure if you kept going off. How far do you want to venture off here? Because you do see tracks, but you notice that they're starting to become somewhat filled with snow the farther you go. You're not quite sure if they're going to keep going. All right, so I'll say you go about, um, 20 minutes. As you do so, give me a perception check. How far away is he from? 20 minutes. So, in a moment, you kind of look off, and you notice that in the direction you went, the way he walked, it, it, this is still kind of your land. Um, you're on what looks to be just depleted farmland. Nothing's growing, no crops have been here, nothing seems to be habitating the area either. And then, at this point, with that low of a perception, you only see a small hum of what looks like a lantern. That's about it. Probably about, uh, I'd say maybe five acres, four acres off with the pace that you've been walking in the snow. You can kind of see it. There's no vegetation or anything. You just see it kind of through the snow in the darkness. Just a small like light illuminating through like just like almost like this augish snow that you can. Okay, so you kind of just look at it and it doesn't seem like anything worth it, and then you just kind of trek back. Um, while this is all happening, what are you doing, Fuctus? I'll walk outside. Alright, so you're hanging outside? Seeing them walk up, I'll just like walk outside. Walk outside, alright, so as this is all going on, he's coming back, you've been talking, you're cackling over bones and I'm, whatnot. I'm also going to switch my Thunder Beast out for the aid. Okay. So that's going to happen. Alright. I want a beast with hands. Okay. That's about it. Now there's a giant heart babe. Nice. Just... Oh, that's a zombie, so it's not a skeleton. Yes, sir. All right, so as this happens, you guys see these orphans. Uh, you're not quite back yet. Um, come walking out uh, very slumberly, and one being carried by Orem. Uh, he kind of looks around. Um, he, Jordan, he kind of jumps down out of it, and then he looks around and... Thank you. Um, I'll try and repay what I can, but uh, and now you kind of see some of the other orphans that were inside of the house start kind of peering out I some of the windows. Some of them burn me too. Uh, on the inside? Uh, no. Okay, I thought, I thought that was Uh, sure. Okay. I'm not quite sure. I thought you. Um, I, I ordered the. I know they went up there. Two of the orphans. Specifically, two orphans. Okay. All of them. The orphans came outside there. Okay, that's fine. Then they are. Then they're outside. Um, so, you, well, they're, they're just kind of looking on the bottom level out the window. And as they're kind of looking around, you just now have this huge audience. And essentially, what do you guys want to do? You guys have now these two orphans. One's kind of drowsy, and Jordan has thanked you all and introduced himself slightly, but child. You guys are the adults. What do you guys want to do? All right, children. It's bed. <laughs> yep, it is quite late. It is quite late. So everybody turns around, and a couple of them seem to already be heading in a in a decent, I'd say, corner, piling up some clothes and makeshift piles of just random stuff they find. Um, as they're doing so, you, as you do so, you kind of hear. I'd say about ten minutes on your way back, you hear what sounds like a small, like, what sounds like. Horse ball or like hooves 
falling throughout the snow. Um, as you do so, you turn and you just see kind of like this dark figure holding what looks like that small glow, and it seems to be grow growing a little bit brighter. And as it starts coming close to you, you definitely see it's this some individual on horseback, and they seem to. Have I'd say they're about 200, 300 feet off, but you definitely know they're coming. In. I will be prepared for an encounter, but I'm just gonna keep talking about it. Okay. All right, so you just kind of stand there and you ready yourself. You just hear, and as you get closer, you see an individual. He kind of pulls back, whoa! And as it gets closer, you see a very rugged, tan skinned individual. He gets down, he has a hat, um, very rugged clothes, weathered, tattered uh, boots, and straps all over his leggings. And he gets down and. Who are you? Actos. Who are you? The name's Theo! What are you doing? Welcome back to home. Home where? The tower over in... No, 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 no one lives there. Well, I do now. Says who? The guy who sold it to me. Who sold it to you? I don't know. I was with the group of Give me a persuasion <laughs> check. <laughs> oh, <laughs> this is a <laughs> <likely> story. <laughs> of 16. Okay. So you bought it, huh? Yep. So you're gonna pay me? Oh. <laughs> well, if you own that estate, then you own the debt. You were full of no debt. Well. Profit to the guy who bought it. Hmm. You sold it. No debt was spoken of, huh? Nope. I work in the area, work for a bunch of these estates. All of your animals I had to sell. Just to pay out. myself back. Huh. He just kind of rides a little bit closer and then he gets down. And now close, you can see human well weathered, well into his years, probably like 65, 70. Kind of has like really arthritis fingers. You can just see they're almost like held that way from like saddling for a moment. <laughs> Now, the debt I'm not too concerned with. You can see his buckle is like bright gold. Like this man's probably well off. Um, but uh, I don't just like being put off like that. People before you, they didn't care for none of their animals, and uh, I'd take care of them, collect my own payment, take my own meat, and they didn't even care. Your crops haven't been tended to in years. Just saying. You pay me to do it, but I have no supply. And I don't have anywhere near the amount of help for your size of the land. You have an estate. Well, on your estate, you have a farmhouse. He kind of points off in the direction you just came from. I've been checking it weekly. There's still not shit in there. It's starting to fall apart. Just saying. I wasn't aware that there was a farmhouse that came with this tower. Well, it's about a mile off your property. Yeah, you got about 10 acres. You lost all of your animals about a year ago. So if you care, either I'll, I'll buy it from you if you don't give a shit. You own it, how about right now? You're gonna have to. 500 gold here, and he just pulls out a sack. You gotta talk to the rest of my group. It's not just me. No, you own it! We all own it. Oh, so now you're not so sure. You'll buy the property, but now you won't speak for it, huh? All right, well, and he puts it away. I'll be around within the week. I'm in town. I work for all the states in here. To sell. Where can we find you? Find you. Probably down by one of the uh, farmhouses in town. We sell livestock there. I usually hang out there when I'm not busy at another estate. But if I'm not there, just ask for me and they'll tell you where I'm working. Pleasure doing business. He goes and he saddles back up on his horse and he just grabs his lantern and you just see him and he 
takes on off, tips his hat, and goes back on off through the snow and heads off your land, it seems, and after about another minute or two, you see the lantern just fade, and he goes away. Like, hey, just so you guys know, apparently, this place has debt. Not wrong to it. <laughs> so you guys make it back, you, you hear, there's extra debt, and um, you don't know how much debt, because you didn't ask. So you know that there, there is some debt. Now, while you guys are sitting here, what are you, what are you guys doing? You guys all going to bed? You're prepping? Taking a long rest? You're sleeping for the night? I'll uh, be tending to children. All right, so, so while you're tending to children, anybody else doing anything specific for the night's rest here? I'll sleep. I have a bedroll, too. I'll give them my bedroll. All right, so you lay one out. A couple kids can yeah, I was about to say, three kids just pile on every inch ankles, and some of their shoulders kind of hang off, but it's all taken. Anybody else do anything? I ordered my all of my own dead ticket with the entrance. Okay. And then I go in that broom closet that has a hole in it. Okay. Yeah, now, is the main, like, foyer, or, like, the main entryway, yeah. is it, it has We'll call it, like, the landing. Yeah, the landing, yeah, there's stairs go yep, up. Yep, the main room has, like, stairs that go up, and then right behind the stairs is the ones that go down. Okay. Uh, then you have room to the right, left, and straight up. Oh. Uh, but those are kind of tattered and starting to fall apart. Once everyone else, like, gets to sleep, essentially, uh, I'll head to that landing, and I'll just sit on the stairs where I'll rest. Okay. I'm going to sleep in the first basement room. Got you. And I'm just a note for myself before I forget. Okay. So, you guys, um, you make it through the night. Uh, you hear a couple things off. Uh, small storms, a couple crackles and thunders here and there, but nothing too much. Um, after a few more moments, you guys go through and you guys wake up. Everything seems to be fine and dandy. You guys got a full night's rest. Um, it seems to be a little bit cloudy. You know, you're in a stormy area. Not a lot of sun makes it through here. Um, Grendridge is already awake. Uh, he's out front making sure that the two caravans that you guys now have, um, yours with Teddy Tours and now one that has been acquired from the crows that you have killed. And uh, it's not quite as nice as yours, but there's nonetheless. If we take out a fully now, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So... I get four. I spent the other four reading my book. Okay, give me a uh, intelligence check. Intelligence or arcana? Uh, this one will be intelligence. Okay. It, well, no, give me an arcana, just because I think your last one was. Okay. What's our proficiency at seven? Let's spell three. three. It's three. Spell three. Yeah, it's not plus eight. eight. Nine. Three seven. Yeah. Twenty. Yeah, Level 19. seven. Would you roll? Nineteen. Jeez. Plus eight. Man, it's a wizard or something. <laughs> it's almost like I have a shoe of intelligence. Um, so you read through. Uh, after a little while, you notice that there's definitely... Um, I mean, you've been reading about this for quite some time now. But as you really kind of dig in, um, you start realizing that there's not only secrets here about necromancy and creating undead and controlling them and these undead sizes and all these you know spells that have to do with controlling you start realizing that after a few pages that's going to take some time you're going to need practice with controlling some of these larger creatures you realize that the negative energies that allow you to raise some of these undead you know they maybe are going to not only provide you with larger creatures, but also you start reading on it and you realize that there's types of different types of like cold and necrotic types of spells and ways to start possibly infusing attacks with some of these creatures with different types of damage, essentially. I'm um, imbuing them uh, with some of these creatures, not maybe making them just skeletal form or maybe zombie form, but imbuing them in some sort of magical form. I think I'm like almost elementals. We'll also go on and speak of, uh, I'd say, what seems to be a heritage, and this really catches you being an Eldrin, of a individual, <laughs> as you drop a coin out of your pocket, <laughs> you, uh, Realize that there was spoken of of an Eldrin way back 
ancient times on the surface that was supposed able to spawn creatures of different elements based on their mood point. Depending on what moods they could influence could raise different elemental types infused into their undead abominations they created. Go on and also read that as you start reading names of these individuals that go way back, you start realizing that it starts talking about the depths of the abyss. And you realize that there's a speaking of this dark magic. And as you do so, this immediately clicks in your brain of what Cryptic spoken of. And how somewhere along the lines he had gone and possibly delved into some dark magic that got him exiled. And upon this speaking of the abyss, and you know, you're starting to think that maybe something deeper within this book. Uh, you only have four hours, but there's something that is deeper here within this ancient text that you think might have something to do with more than just spells. More than just the ability to gain power over the So undead. you're saying it's more than necromancy? Possibly. It's probably demonology. So, as you go on and read through that, um, the rest of you come to... Did I functionally get anything? Uh, no. Okay. Just hints so. uh, I would say you are very close to, um, basically understanding some of the whereabouts of this. I mean, you, basically your last couple of readings with the chapter you wanted to speak on is controlling larger undead. And you guys, where you're at, you're going to need more experience with probably some of your magic to be able to do. So you might need a couple more levels, like maybe another level or two before you can really start imbuing that. Even if you maybe can understand it, you as an individual are not powerful enough to start imbuing this. It'd be like reading a book on how to become a master craft and then just doing it, you know? Like you're gonna need to become... I'm gonna be, I need to use my summon. Yes, summons more, exactly. Like reading is one thing, you're gonna need to start acting that out and getting that like combat XP, essentially. I have like academic knowledge, not practical. Right. And those are both being weighed in on this, too. So, like, each time you summon... But anyway, we'll get to that. But anyway, so you guys wait... Now, is it, like... Is it... Can my summon just be out, or do I have to resummon it? Between the experience? Like, is it... The yeah, it's, it's out. Yeah, it's just out fighting okay. with it and stuff. So, you guys are up. Denison seems to be itching to... Or Grendrich... <sighs> I, I told myself not today. Yeah. I told myself not today. <laughs> first words. It's so fluent. I'm gonna name my first child. Dennis. Yeah, Dennis. Dennis anyway. Yeah. No. Anyway. All right. Redridge seems to be itching. He comes up. So uh, seems off a little bit. Nervous. So what are we doing? Are we going to be heading to uh, Albertine, or do we have other things that we need to attend to first? You good? I mean. Yeah. I think we should uh, probably establish a little bit of a base here before we head out. I mean, do you how how quickly do you want to go to Alpazine? Not very quickly. But that and is going to Alpazine a good idea for you? Is no tech he did much of illegal things? I mean, if you wanna go back to That's, the prison He just kinda of ponders for a moment. Well really? too long. There's got, there's got to be a normal life. So whether I turn myself in now, or they come and find me in a couple years, one way or another, I'm not gonna just sit in this shithole. I think the longer you wait, the worse it'll be. Agreed. But, question, if you come with me... I was gonna say, the question is, do you even need us? I'd like to. <laughs> wait a second, wait a second. I don't want to no, go by no, my pause, the pause, meter changing like you're not going with me. Like, what? Stop, stop, stop. <laughs> if you go and you do get in the prison, we just learned that we can Oh, they're gonna threaten me with prison for sure. No, you take prison. They, they're not gonna put me in Padre. I just fucking broke you all out of Padre. You They're not gonna let me in where I know how to break you out of. Well, we didn't really know how to break us. 
They don't listen, so go tell them that. <laughs> kind of. So why don't kind we go tell them that? That it was yeah, to stop Cassandra Volt. That's my plan. Is that I'm going to tell them on my hands and knees that I was... And hopefully they believe it. I was going to say, so we were... They don't... We're, they not, don't, con- they, they, we're not connected to her explosion. The explosion they don't her. know. Okay. A buff table? They don't know. Yeah. They know that you they, guys, you know, went and... Yada, yada, so, yeah. Just so everybody's... They knew we were in the prison and that we were not there anymore. No. You don't know. From, from my we understanding... We don't know if they know. I can't tell you. You don't we know. We only know one person knows. From my You know Jonah, Grendridge, Arlanda. Yeah. And you guys killed the guards. Yep. And the people inside the prison that you spoke to, I mean, people saw you. Yeah. You talked to people. Uh-huh. You killed some people. Killed some people. So, I mean... Jonah? Who's Jonah? Mike is his father. That's my yes. Okay. So, yes. uh, so aside from that, you know, thank you for what it is. Uh, Grandridge. You're coming with me, or yeah, I'm planning on it. Yes. I'm not. Yeah, going whether or not you got to be in the room with me, another side. But yeah. if you're on the wall, if they fucking take me, you, we, we're done. We're out. You break me up. We kill. Them. Okay. I'm okay. not, no. Okay. Listen, you're not, you're, you're not going to prison. Is what I'm I'm not going. They will do worse. Listen, listen, look at me. Look, Gildo. <laughs> Gildo, you're not looking. No. If you the can't re- tell. I'm wearing a mask. If the, I don't have eyes. If the Red <laughs> Council think I'm up to some shit, they're not just going to throw me in prison. They'll throw me in prison. But that'll be the last you'll see of me. So, so, you're coming with this me. Is, this is just giving me more reasons to fake your death. How? <laughs> you keep saying that, but you don't have a plausible plan. So then what are you guys going to go do? Say, hey, Grendridge is here. And then they're going to ask all of you fucking questions. I feel like, I feel honestly, like, just... Throw me to the wolves. No, right. No, right what happens is me, by giant... Fucking gorilla monster named Abe now. That's his name. Abe. Abe. The Abe, Abe. Gorilla monster. Okay. Right. We get into a fight in the town square where. Oh, I that brutally, sounds great. I brutally yes. murder you, and then you're a murderer. Then you're a murderer. Then you're wanted. <laughs> then how can we ever live in freedom? <laughs> then you're chased. Then I just summon a different monster. Then they and know that you inside. just bought a house in Adventus, and that's where you live. Nobody's not- seen me have Abe yet. No, not a good idea. How about I just have eight? How about he time? quits talking? So, the yeah. rest of you, I feel like do we have any better plans? No, honestly, I honestly, as straightforward as it is, us just going with you and you being like, I... They're gonna I'm notice, to listen, when we walk up, honestly, they're gonna know that we've been, we've been, I've been missing for three weeks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, at least. Well, I'm missing it. Yeah, we the fuck in the hole. I've been MIA. Yep. You guys know what that means. So, we've been traveling together. We know each other. You're gonna kill. I, we kill for each other. Yeah? I mean, my you bar want, killing things is real low. Listen, you offer <laughs> me <laughs> to run your house. Yeah. And now you're gonna throw me to the wolves. Whoa. Whoa! No. Exactly. I never exactly. said that. Exactly. I feel like but you're getting the thought of something like that. No, <laughs> no, Brent, no. Are we... That's because I'm a skeleton. That's fucked up. <laughs> it's fucked up. It's always That's the, racist. It's always the racist. <laughs> you always pull the race card. You pull the race card a lot. Yeah, it it's early in the morning and he just, he, morning and he just starts bones. drinking. It's made of bones. Brent, I feel like, I feel like uh, we're kind of riding die at this point. So I'm gonna reluctantly go and like actually become super wanted. Listen, somebody's you're gonna walk into the cops and be like, I did it for a real good reason. <laughs> you know, we just killed all those guards, left all those poor widows and orphans because we wanted to break these guys out of prison that I put them in unlawfully, by the way. Like, it's just, like none of these sound like good things. <laughs> we were in faking your death and just you going missing forever is a way better option, in my opinion, than going and being like, Hey, look, it's police and Red Council. I did all these mega illegal things. To be fair, we could have we we might be able to talk to Orlanda, and she might she might have some sway within the regime. Yeah, but why the fuck? Like, we haven't really done anything for Orlanda. We, we <laughs> Thunderbolt. Thunderbolt is 
one of the people she did not like, she was actively investigating. Oh, that's a plus. Yeah. Um, I, don't, I don't feel we've done enough pull. With where's Lana Lana where's to have her call in favor? He's in the house. Uh, yes. Do you know Theo? Wait, sorry. Uh, I, I don't know who that is. No, I, 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 he would have. He would have. Yeah, he, he, he came back. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Do you know Theo? Yeah, was like, here we go. Uh, yeah. Uh, not really, no. So you guys kind of work together? I mean, I know his pants died in Padre. That's the only time I've ever seen him. But he didn't work on the land here? I mean, he works on all the lands here. Okay. He works on all the farm hands. Were you aware that there was a debt attached to the place? Maybe. How do you I'm know? I'm paying shit because Theo said there was. Yeah, said, yeah I mean, like... yeah, there's debts. Who? They're not mine. The house was for sale, was it not? You didn't buy it from me. You didn't buy it at all. It was given to us. Well. And who the fuck gives people debt? That's fucked up. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. I that's mean... A, that's a good... Good way to, you know, end up dead. Random person who gave us dead. We're not technically killing... didn't collect it. Yeah. <laughs> We're not killing Gerald. We're anyway, he yeah. just kind of looks I'll at you. Him up. What? <laughs> Why? What? Uh, what about him? Is he causing trouble? So, I just wondered if yeah, we could, right, right. if he could help, maybe we could turn this place around. Uh, he he can help. He's got money. He's got money. He, he owns most of the farmland here and most of the livestock in the area. He knows all the travelers, and I think he even lives maybe in a media, but he just travels. Hates his wife. I don't even know if he's married. He hates his wife, but you don't know if he's married? He bitches about some old hag, but I don't know who that is. <laughs> what do you want me to do? I work for you, I guess. If you, you said you worked the lands a little bit? <sighs> I mean, when people come here, yeah, I would put up a good stay and act like it was like a any motel or hotel, I guess. You're, you're but... more of a house hand than a farm hand, is what I'm getting, is what I'm hearing. I work on cleaning, cooking, okay. cleaning. He's, close, he's closer to a butler than a farm. Maybe mild repair? No. Even mild, you said? No. No. You can't even, like, fix a door knobs? That's a laundry, no. maybe? I mean, the tunnel system... Yeah, he, yeah. <laughs> that was help with Theo. That is destruction. Oh, so that not not over not, his not grieving parents. He understood why I wanted to see mine. Hmm. So he helped me. I couldn't do that by myself! So someone else knows about this tunnel. And yes, one person, person but, but one of the richest men, probably, that comes here. He's not going to tell anybody. Yeah, how sure are you? I've been coming there for a year. What, are you going to tell somebody? No, but he might for a good bit of <sighs> money. He just shakes his head. Wait a minute. So am I gonna clean? We take grid I'll make some now. food. We now technically owe the way into the prison. And we'll be investigated if that goes south. Which means things that happen with him and his family. I mean that's assuming it's assuming that we something goes wrong with Renrick. Uh and that they connect us to it. I would like to avoid that. I mean, we've kind of been traveling another three weeks, and we have been seen yes. in his presence. Through, like, a forest. And oh, if oh. any witnesses survive from the prison? I think the only pe nope. people who have seen us with Grenrich is I mean, Terry. inmates. I mean, inmates saw you. Yeah. Um, aside from that, Jonah and a couple, and a couple some like... Of the inmates were obvious spies. I mean, a couple guards, but... Yeah. Uh, that's a small chance. We'll cross that bridge when we come. Uh, I think, yeah, I think we just, hopefully it goes well. If not, no, we have to kill him. At this point, Oxford, he kind of steps up. Do you fuck this? 
I got an idea on how we can get some wood. Some trees where no one owns the land. Go gather them on the edge of the desert and bring them back. I could at least start some of the repairs for at least maybe the first floor or two and start patching up some of the holes. If you guys are going to be gone for a little bit, that'll give us something to do and uh, we can at least make Laden try and help. I mean, and he kind of looks at the other two orphans. What are they going to do? And at this point, you see one is like kind of starting to wake up now that you guys have had like a long night's rest. Um, at this point, you see whatever effect it was is starting to wear off on female dwarf and um, Jordan seems to be fine, but the dwarf seemed to have had a worse effect for some on whatever this was. Um, and now she kind of comes to, he's awake, but they're just kind of reserved inside as you guys are kind of, I mean, are you guys outside of your house at this point? Are you guys just I'm inside? Just here in the landing. All right, well, then everybody's in the landing. I mean, you just kind of peer around and you just seem kind of reserved it's in the, the corner. Kid. Are we right, ever well, certain these woods aren't owned by anybody? Pretty sure, yeah. I mean, people go there. They take wood on there all the time. I've been there a couple times. Never got in trouble. So, even if we do, I'll just drop it and say I'm sorry. Can't be that bad. Good. I send aid with them. Give me used to carry more wood. Yeah. You and you can garden. look over these children while we're going. Give me a gold and yeah. But they gotta help. And if they help, we gotta clean everything. And we need food. We have no food. You have like 10 people here and no food. Yeah. Well, what it sounds like is we need to make a trip into town here in Inventus. Um, we can get wood, but we should also probably pick up any other building supplies, nails and such. It seems like there's a lot of repairs going on in town. Pick up some miscellaneous general goods. Uh, at least 10 days worth of food. Yeah, let's go shopping, Grendridge says. Oh, yeah, yeah, let's go shopping. In fact, let's go. if we get a bunch of scrap iron, I have fabricate so I can turn, like, a large cubic, like, 10-foot thing of iron scraps into nails. Oh. That'll save you guys some money, That's actually. Yeah. I, say, I would just probably, say we probably just go collect. I'll just say you guys crap. know in this area with storms like this stuff is used a lot. Like some of these supplies are just like constantly being. Actually, I'm gonna ask the kids. So that'd be like a big deal here, actually. The ones that don't want to help with wood, if they want to like scavenge for like any like metal they can find in town. Yeah, you see like three of them. Um, I'd say. Uh, can you just make furniture with that. I can make anything with that. What is it? Okay. Well, can you? Because way you know. know. Yeah. Can you? I can make things like as long as it's not a magical item. Yeah. Let me. Know. So you can make a chair, table. Yeah. That's what it's just in time. No, it's just during its cast. Yeah. I can only do it once a day because. Yeah. Orthos spell to make a table. <laughs> yeah, but it's it makes At table. Point, like yeah, but I can also make trade goods with it. So oh, like you want to? Okay. So yeah. as they're talking and going through this and discussing what they're doing, you want to do Cindy. Ah. Do? Okay. My nephew that I've been trying to find. Oh, that's dope. You want to do what? He's, so, he's casting sending. Which it's is that like requiring the phone call to anyone normal? As long as I do. know, the long as I'm familiar with it. It's also capable of extra panel. Well, is it really? Yep, but there's a five percent chance that it won't work. Oh. Fucking wizard. Yeah, and he can answer in a like manner immediately. <coughs> yep. And he knows that it's me. Yeah. Okay. So, so have words yep, he does. Yep. The message across any distance, other points. I'm just making sure I know what I can say. I don't want to tell you not enough or too much. Short message. So I can say 25 or back. There's a 5% chance. If they're not on this On plane. the plane. Cool. Cool, cool. Oh, yeah. So you're right. somehow in like the, the special plane. All right. So you're sending to Heldris. All right, what are you saying? Eldris, where are you? Are you safe? What the fuck have you been doing? That's what you said? Yep. All right. Um, you wait a moment. Um, and then you hear back. Uncle? I made it to Audrey. 
I'm in some church, but I haven't eaten in a week. Need some help. This man calls himself Duradel. He's evil. I don't think I have any more. Is that being mental or does he have to say it out loud? Mental. They hear it in their mind. Probably like five over. <laughs> I was like, after I said it, I'm like, yep. I made it for the ones he did. There you go. <laughs> next is next. There's going to be a spell that requires you to write it out in haikus. Oh, stop! Well, I mean, so as you get that, you kind of for a moment as you break that, you you just feel nervousness from his presence. Like his 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 tone was a little who, shaky. Who was the guy that the crows were saying? Did um, you know? heard from uh, Crestfall yeah. Jameer that in Audre, yes, that a Durdo Harrett. As well as the Rocks family had something in with these orphans, possibly. Harry is also one of the names that was on Cryptic's kill list. <coughs> I don't know if anyone else picked up on that. He was the one who stood the group. Here at the mat. Wait a minute. We kind of have bad blood with Cryptic, so maybe we can just try trafficking on Cryptic. Like, not. And I don't know about you guys, but pissing off a shadow demon necromancer I a pretty big deal. I just never want to meet Cryptic again. If I mean, you, you guys are vastly underestimating the bullshit that that shadow demon is. It's a shadow demon. There's no use in worrying about something we can't control. So as you guys are saying this, you see Talia now coming awake. You, you said, you said that you know Albazine, and are you heading that way? Here within the next, I mean, maybe even today. Do you have a family there? Um. Yeah, let's say we should probably ask why. I mean, I assume that they're taking any, anyone they can get. Are you saying that? Yeah. As you say that, well, some people as you ask like, why, why they were captured, she looks, I, I don't know, but I heard that we were going to be taken to Pan Al. Pan? P-A-N? Like Pan Al? O-W, like Pan Al? O-U-W? 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 Pan apostrophe O U W. It's a place. It's a city in Audrey. It's a very it's 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 actually a pretty major city. That's why I'm telling you. Like you guys maybe maybe have heard it. Um, you guys wouldn't know where though. But it's maybe something you guys have come across in passing, especially where you guys have well, been traveling. Bad news, random person. Um, my name's Talia. Talia. I was too busy. Catching What's your name, me. random person? Technically oh, right. not a person. So then, why should I talk to you with any manners? She turns her back and just walks away. Well, fuck you then. She turns around. Is that Fuck you then. That's no way to speak to a young lady. Bad news is you were most likely sold to them because that's like their whole mo. So somebody sold you. Well, so who would sell you? I don't know. And you should probably stay here until you're just mean. <laughs> well, I don't mean to. So, okay. your family. Do you have family? I lived with my grandparents. Would you like to go back? Yeah, I was going to school. I went to Endell's. I was. Okay. It was important. And for information, um, what was the last thing you remember before you woke up in the fucking cart? Like. Walking back to my room on campus, where a lot of the students stay. 
Say it's Mamby then. Was it? Uh, it was after class, about almost dusk. Right before night, sun was down. It was raining that night. I didn't even get a chance to scream. Next thing I knew, I woke up in the carriage. Hide. Barely able to even move my body. I mean, that means on top of buying orphans, they're just like nabbing defenseless anybody. Oh yeah, oh. that's how they got jaw down. That's that's even. Why do we let that guy live? Oh, I was gonna. Call I mean, I I'm not a liar. Like I kind of signed off on that. Never did. <laughs> Granger right, just looks. Yo, that uh, that dragon pipe man. We're just gonna be hanging out. Um, we're going shopping though, right? I want to pick one of those up. <laughs> yes. Where'd you get it from? Can I test it just so I know well, I the don't know sweetness? If they sell it here. Oh, okay. it's special made. Who'd you get it from? I forget the name. <gasps> per Pervon? Per oh, uh, Percy Pufon. Per Do you know him? Now, are you on good terms with him, though? Uh, I mean, he gave me a wand because yeah. I was saying. He purchased himself for customers. He thought he gave I you mean, something? He kind of protected his. Yeah, no. Was that? Yeah, that was Percy's. Yeah, yeah it was. He yeah. protected his door. Uh, he has a. I have a dire wolf pelt he's really interested in. Now, as you've been, like, blowing out all these magical creatures constantly, it's just like normal. You guys are just seeing this, like, dragons and stuff, Gildors. He's just walking around. It's magic. Magic. It's magic. So George Granger just tries but it doesn't work. He's got Nick on. Um, yes. You coming or going? You staying or going? Going back home? Stay with us. I don't have a home. This is much better. But we need food. Listen. We're, I'll we're go. Gonna hand, we're gonna handle that. We're how about this. how about we go hunting? Do you know how to use a long bow? What about the farm? All this land, is this all ours? And he just points off into the distance. It's all, all, all ours. ours. <laughs> uh, so you live here, you live here though. Not you, not you. We are yeah. more than happy. He just rescinds into himself a little bit. We're more than happy to shelter you. If you But I can't it. use any if of that. If you earn it, if you earn it. So let me get some. We're working on it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, like, Are it's these... literally been, we've literally had this place for like less than 20. So you're staying. So you're staying. Yeah. For Can now. you use a longbow though? If we got an extra of those, none of us use longbow. I mean, sure. I was gonna say, I mean, he, he knows anything. He's totally lying, by the way. You can just tell he's lying. But yeah, he says sure if that's what he needs to do to stay. How many bulk? None. None. So the last. There's three on. They, they they use you guys got a couple barrages like shot on you they yeah. they honestly like shot and then went in said, there's a reason that they had to come in there yeah <laughs> they ran out of ammo <laughs> don't think they were really expecting that much force with two caravans to need to yeah. i mean the other caravan had all the archers in it they weren't yeah. really Anyway, I'm giving you too much information. Why am I telling you all this? Just, just so what are you doing, life? It doesn't matter. They're yeah, yeah. They're dead. Yeah. These are really good. They are. I'm gonna send you this. Give me one. Toss me one. Here, pass it. Just give me one. Just give me one. I'm... Okay, no. One bag is what I gave him. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> yeah. 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 Wow. <laughs> Sorry, go on. Yeah. It's got sending again. I'm gonna ask Teladoras who, but what god is the Twitch god that you can do, if you know that. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, I'm, I'm, okay. I'm gonna ask. Yeah. Teladoras. The answer what you hear is here. Hold on. Give him a second. It's an entirely different thing. Teladoras, do you know what god Church is to? Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, shit. I don't know. I gotta check my notes. I do. They use, they use a spell in the campaign too for the all the time. And yeah. there's Travis, is, there's, a, there's yeah. another character, so there's ten. another player who literally does this, who's counting as the person is speaking. <laughs> okay, so what religion? What, a, what god? Like, yeah. What god specifically? Okay. If he knows, I, it's a, I'm not sure if they would share that with them. Mm -hmm. 
I'm pretty sure. Anything else? Are they actually <coughs> hurting people? Or you? I mean, those are all words. Those are all words. <laughs> yep. Now let me go back on what I'm saying. I'm fine. We got another question. You got 10, 25, right? Yeah, 25. Four. 10 more. Thirds. I'll give you eight more because you went back. You pooping? <laughs> How's the weather? <laughs> I'm like, hey, you pooping? How are you doing, loved one? No, I'm just kidding. Okay, you pooping? I already All right. Asked. I already so, asked you yeah. wait a moment. Yeah, I'm good. I don't know of a god, but there is one that's dark. Some are being hurt. I've seen many go missing recently. I fear in time I'm next. One, maybe two off. Twenty-eight. Come on. <laughs> 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 if you want to help, is that you have to like maybe use an airship or an actor cryptic pass. That's like fucking two continents away. away. He's like two continents away. It's quite a distance. <laughs> like, this is so, a I little mean, out of our budget. Even without him, this, these people are doing shit. Like, mm-hmm. like shit. Well, like, even if the to, to get there would be yeah. a fucking journey in itself. Right. right. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Function information is a little. Even if we want to do that now. I mean, in a perfect world, in a perfect world, because wanting to go to Andre, the fastest route would be by airship that you know. Yeah. And you would have to go from Hexwell yeah. to Rocks to Andre. Oh, they go counterclockwise. They go this way. So not only so do you have to map the map by rocks, yeah. it goes rocks, rocks down. Yes, yeah, and we rocks. know we're most likely rocks. wanted by rocks, yeah. because of at minimum our association with Pug. You know Pug's missing. Pug's, Pug. Pug's fucking. They probably got him. anyone know who's crying? <laughs> meet Pug? Did he ever? I don't think he ever met Pug. Oh. I am not. I have no idea who that is. So we're just gonna like ignore that he ever existed. I mean, unfortunately, until he like, shows up. It's one hell of a bender. It's a, it's a, it's a month long bender. This guy's in. <laughs> we haven't really had the chance to like. I mean, we haven't been back at Albertine yet. I think he was just tired of our bullshit. No, I think he was. Kidding. But would he stay anyway? Yeah, you guys know that. The last you guys know of Pug, technically, was when you were in Alberzine at the Battle Bar. Yeah. His tab was open, uh-huh. never got paid, and the last you know is that his room had blood left in it, and he was missing. Oh, I don't remember the blood part. I, don't... I remember getting like a letter from him, and the letter looked like it was almost written. Either... Oh, that's right. It was a forged letter. It was either forged or it was written under Written under press. press. Some, something or... was yes, that's right. That's right. right yeah. I think I the room, I think in his room, maybe you guys didn't investigate the room, but... Apparently there not. you go. There you go. Apparently well, there's not. a little teaser. Uh-huh. Well, it wasn't like a lot. It was like maybe a small struggle, possibly. That's all you know. He was obviously not at the battle bar where he was supposed to be. Right. He's like, <laughs> dude, those strawberry ones. I told Ethan he was just. A- anyway, so what are, what are you guys doing? Well, we got we gotta go shopping. Robin. All right, so you guys loading up the carriage and you guys heading out, leaving all the kids I'm behind. Time. We also, have two carriages, and we're buying two. a bunch of I good Now you guys have two horses. I have a... Listen, yeah. let me just... Your Petty's Tours needs two horses to pull. Yeah. It is that, like, big. The other one can use one. Yeah. Or, like, one of your beasts possibly could pull it. Yeah. But whatever happened to that horse? Is it gone, gone? You just slapped its ass and ran off. Yeah, you slapped its ass and was gone. Yeah. I didn't know how to, like, I didn't really sure they Okay. Um, how far? Uh, but you were just doing it in the landing. Can my can my ape? Oh, man. Give me a perception check, everybody. Oh, I 
Right, right I but they could to, see you. I thought you had to verbal counter spell. Yeah. Let me look. <laughs> <I thought laughs> you you had to even have it. have it. He <laughs> might. He might. I could have sworn you had to verbal. And then the it. answer is mental. Yes, that's what I've always assumed. That could have been too. Let's uh, let's let's, let's oh, just see what well, your perception well, checks are. And then you wouldn't know what what it said. Twenty six. Okay, what'd you get? Seven. What'd you get? Were you even listening? I got Gildor's not listening. I got 18. Bro. Okay, so I'd say you just noticed that he was off in a corner doing something. But he often prays to his god. <laughs> right, so you're not sure yet. <laughs> even if I was by myself, I, I do that in, in a bis- yeah. Anyways, so I, mean, oh, I, I speak. You know it. He's over there just like. <laughs> if you ever hear me, I'm usually just saying like, "Give me the fuck alone." I don't want to talk to you. I shit like that. Oh, okay. He's an emo edge mo. Yeah. But if you're not, if you're actually like trying to just fail, you know, make me. Into- all right, so what are you guys doing? You guys burning time? We're heading the town. So are you guys taking any oh, of the can, can orphans? The big, the big eight. Pull our big cart. Is it a large creature? Yes. Then yes. Yeah. Okay. To uh, both caravans? I will ask any children if they want to come. None well, of them want to come. None of them I want to, want to recruit ones to gather scrap metal. What kid wants debris. to go to the grocery store? I don't know. Who wants to explore and grab scrap metal? If you buy me stuff, I'll go. Well, we're buying a bunch of stuff anyway. What do you want? What you see want? a couple of the girls, they want some new clothes. That Well, that's probably in the supply category of well, then, if they're getting new clothes, I want new clothes. And I want new weapons, you see, Oxford. I need a new axe. If I'm going to be going and cutting down these trees, I need a new axe. Well, that would be in supplies for the household. Well, then, I need a new bed, you see, Tyler and Reach out. If he's getting counts. a new axe and he's getting a new clothes, yeah, then I need you're, a bed. You're, 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 already, you're saying things that are already on the list of things to buy. And they're just staring at you like, <laughs> when? Like, now. Well, then, let, well, we'll go get them. When are you That's getting the plan. them? The, the, what I'm asking, what you want to do while we go? Nothing. Get We're gonna stuff. hang out here and, and do I'm nothing. I'm asking if anybody wants to go explore and see if they can find a bunch of scrap metal. That sounds like something you want to do. Not really. Well, why would we want to do it? Because how I about you give me use... ten gold and I'll do it? Tylen says. <laughs> so last day when I went to burn down downstairs, he said there, that there was some kind of ore in one of the rooms, like in the wall. Um, yeah, F, I think it was on the, uh, without looking, I think it was on the second and the third story, you see, like, deposits. Like, because there's just dirt, you know, it's natural, just yeah. cut out dirt that goes down. Like, imagine, you know, like a triangle up, and then you flip it. That is essentially your house, in a, in a way. And it is a tower, and the bottom is, like, three rooms, essentially, and then two-ish rooms, but they're all kind of... Kind of hard to explain without it being put together. I feel like you really just need to draw a picture. I kind of have, yeah. but yeah. Um, until you guys, I don't know if you guys are going to like repair it all or yeah. so, but essentially just imagine like a three, what two, one ish. Walden? Yeah. I'm going to ask him if he knows what kind of worth that is. Uh, no. Oh, fuck. Do you? Just kidding. That's why you asked. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I don't. <laughs> I'm gonna say to the children, if anybody wants anything new, you're... Oh, you see that immediately, half of them, maybe. Oxford's like, I want that fucking axe. You can see him. Only if I get the axe, and I'll help with the metal if if I get a new axe. Fine. Everybody can... He's going, he steps out. Everybody else, we can't risk the twins. <laughs> they, after a moment, we can't risk leaving you. We'll here go and help shop for the clothing. We don't want all of you just choosing bad clothing for us to wear. So we'll go and try and help pick out the best. I don't know about the best. You see a couple of the females like they look at each other like boys' clothes. I don't want to wear boys' clothes. What if they don't fit? It has to fit my... Anyway. I want to try to break off the piece. Oh. They're all men. They don't know what we need. I'll try to break off the piece. Fine. Door, you go up and it's hard. No way, this is... I was going to try to like bash it, see if I can get like a no... What are you bashing it mace. with? A mace. Okay, uh, give me a attack roll. Not my magic mace. It just... Oh, okay, yeah. you got yeah, another yeah. one, huh? Yeah, I that's have probably my, a pretty I, good I, thing. I have my ordinary mace, a hand axe, and 
Oh the god. Magic mace. Okay. So attack roll? Yep. I need my dice. This is finally when I need my dice. I, I doubt it. Seth just loves poking shit. Hey, I want to know what kind of war that is. Maybe, maybe we could use it. So as you swing. I'll think come with time. I rolled a 100. Oh. Oh. A literal 100. Oh. It's death or two kills. <laughs> Where do I add to that again? It's not gonna I matter. Shit. No, well, yeah, like on three plus whatever. So, I shit. just because of. So, you swing wow. into this. So, you hit. As long as you did not one, this basically. It's, yeah. it's a large, like, deposit on the wall. You just see it's kind of. It's not protruding much. It's almost. Um, it looks like it's as if the house or whatever this basement was was, like, concaved out. And then when they hit this ore, it almost was flush with the wall. So, they just, like, made it with it. You know, it's not really protruding much into the structure of your foundation. Mm -hmm. But as you take this like mace and you boom, your mace just immediately shatters. Yeah. As it does so, it just spews out with this magical essence and you see it just sort of the, like the ripple orb? through. Yes. You see it just like what ripple kind of through and then go back in. And as you do that, you hear it like reverberate through and just and then reverberate through and everybody hears this for a moment. It doesn't like shake the land or anything, but as you do this, you feel it throughout the land a little bit. Almost like a small like, like a like a rod, like vibrating, like a fissure, like, like yeah, a tuning, like a, like a, yeah, like a, like it's ringing. Yes, like it's yeah. well, underneath ground, like you can so, see here, like so maybe a hundred, two hundred feet under under um, ground. Give me a Arcana check. Where well, you're from here, yeah. you may know something. And Teldris's parents, you, you may have a little bit of possible knowledge. Arcana. Yeah, Arcana. And everybody hears this, so if anybody was like, what the fuck is that? You would know to... Fucking poking shit again. Why is it turning to Azure again? 23. Um, we just leave him in that cage? <laughs> the magic you've never really, like, seen so before, but the, unfortunately. but the outburst of magic is almost in, like, a rainbow form. It's in such magical colors, you feel that this magical power, it goes further with him. You kind of, um... Can just tell by that large it's almost like six feet by like five feet in like diameter it's you know the, the diameter of this is quite large as you see and it's almost cylindrical but not perfect so obviously i'm not there but this is just the first level second level second level. and there's this only on the second level third fourth done yeah you guys haven't really gone and That's looked too much and you know we were just running there pretty much. Right, and it was dark. It was completely pitch black other than the light spell. He just saw it when he went down because he was like, you know, looking when he went up, so he knows. Now I know we have magic ore in the basement. Yeah. Alright, load up. Alright. <laughs> so, well, everybody's like, fuck okay. it. Alright. You guys load up. <laughs> you guys are traveling basement. inside. Everybody's going in. Our um, big, our Lawton, big Ox is, is coming. Lawden is not. He's staying with the eight, orphans. The smaller one has, we have like an extra orphan. All right, so you guys traveling? What are you getting, extra horse? So what did you get, extra horse? Abe has the big carriage. Abe has the big carriage. And, and so part two. He sent off the other horse, though. Yeah, we already own two. We already had two horses. Yeah, but that needs for your carriage. And no, Abe's doing that one. Oh so no, that one needs two large, two, two. Two large. Yeah, it's gonna need either. I mean, how technically, does it, how does it have two fucking horses pulling it. Then? Technically, I would say, are, give me an athletics check for it. Are hey, they? give me an athletics I check. They're, I don't think they're large. Give me an athletics check just to see if you can pull Wait, it. You said that ours needs two. We have two. The other, one, the needs other one. one only needed one. Mm -hmm. But he's got a large creature. Yeah. So with uh, eighteen strength. <clears throat> yeah. Eighteen. All right. Yeah, I'd say it'd be able to pull it for at least an hour, fine, without it starting to really slow down. Um, which is easy enough to get it into town. So is that how you guys want to do it? All right, so you guys load up. You have one horse staying back at your estate? Yeah. Okay. You guys are just going to tie it up to some rubble or let it run free? Is there, nah, is there like a... There's nothing. No, like, there's <laughs> nothing? You literally have a house. Well, uh, because he has his... Creature taking one character, the small carriage. Is it taking the big carriage? I don't know if it can. It can for an hour. Okay. You can make it there and back. So, yeah. and then we have a small carriage which only requires one horse. 
But your creature can't pull a small creature. It can't. It can't. It just wants to so why pull the big one. Can't we just do two horses of the big one in your creature? Because pulls the, one. we're going to put a bunch of fucking trade goods in our big carriage. I thought my creature would carry it better than the horses. Two medium would carry it better than one large. I think both horses are weaker, like together are weaker than my eight. The riding horses? Uh, these are just riding horses. They're not any, you know, they are large beasts with a strength of 16. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. Is more than 118. Yeah. <laughs> that's why I made you have a check. So, I mean, you can do it, but okay, if fuck, you. I, have, I pulled a sworn arm one with Andy. <laughs> if, you, if you really want to, you, you could, we could just. You, you're a big. So, good. are we just discussing the logistics? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Fuck, I know, gone. I know. It's <laughs> like, yeah. Come back, yeah. 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 we're gone. We are now in town. <laughs> so, you guys. <laughs> and on your way, what are you doing? Could one horse pull the small carriage? 100%. Yes. Okay, so just swap. Put a bunch of stuff in the big carriage. Your beast can pull the big carriage with another horse, and one of the horses can just pull the small. That'd be a good one. We're fine. Whatever. Whatever. Who cares? Who cares? <laughs> so, as you guys are like, ah, fuck, this goes over, he swaps it, and you guys go. You guys travel for about. I feel like uh, you keep the horses together. Yeah. They're a couple. Yeah. I'm saying on the way back. The, the, the carriage slightly pulls because one beast is a little bit stronger, but not too much. Um, we'll as you guys go, oh, you guys. Yeah, yeah. On that. <laughs> beast on the small oh, one. You guys it's make it into town, and you realize that some of the town is in mostly repaired state. Um, yeah. They've been working for the next, uh, basically the last 24 hours, pretty heavily on it, and most things are in repair. You see people are starting to open up food stands and whatnot, and a lot of shops are open. You see people, as you guys are coming in, uh, many vendors start coming up. Oh, you want some of this storm gear? And it's, it's just junk. You see people trying to sell you, basically, uh, gear that is supposed to withstand wind and weather, and it's just normal materials. Um, none of it really catches your eye. It's kind of overpriced. Uh, you guys make it a little bit further into the actual town of Inventus, where there's the main central uh, market district. You guys find there that there are a couple areas where there's an individual in the center of town seeing you as you guys stop your carriage. Uh, Grendridge, he steps out. All right. I'll go deal with the clothing if you guys want to go get the hardware. Deal? Sure. Deal. All right. He takes um, Reeser and the... Uh, actually, no, they didn't go. Oh, yes, they did. They went with yeah, um, they Oxford. The yeah, so they went with the clothes, and Oxford is going with you guys. Um, so they go off, and you see them kind of disappear. Grendridge looks at you. I'm going to need, like, a couple gold, though. How much? I don't know. Maybe, like, five, ten? I'm not going to spend more than that. Here's 20. We, we, we did give him We did give him a share of that element. Yeah. Yeah. He should have, like, a thousand gold or something. I mean, he does. So. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll give him 20 gold. Oh, thanks. All right. Ride or die, bud. Doesn't want to cut out of his own cut, man. Here he's trying to. I'm not his. All right. Anyway, so he goes off, and uh, you guys now are going into town. Um, what are you guys wanting to get specifically? Uh, you guys I said nails. A list. Yeah, you guys said nails. Yeah, so we need an axe. Mm-hmm. You need an axe for Oxford. Duh. Maybe we should get like three axes. All right, so I'll say there's a general store. This town's not very big, so most of the hardware and, like, weapons and stuff are going to be located in the same, like, area. Same two shops. All the, like, tailors and food and whatnot, it's a little bit farther off. So you guys are going to be shopping with the same merchant. So, you guys want to enter? Or you guys, so, the, you know, talking it out out front. Um, I said nails. Um, I go in. Axes. I'm, I'm wood. Wood. We just even take care of wood. Right? Travel yeah. rations? Metal. Okay. So, it's okay. Like so um, fun fact. You look at the they, shop mate. He kind of just looks at you. We should turn uh, five silver for some of those rations. But, um, yeah. they're kind of old. That's okay. But will they kill me? No, I they're not going to kill you. God, I wouldn't be sending you to them. And he just pulls them out and they're just a little dry. There you go. Uh, yeah. um, Anything else? You got a nice um gotcha. We got some clothes that might fit you. Anything else? No? Do you have any food that would be good for a house? Isn't all food good for a house? I think what he's I asking is non-perishable food. Oh. Uh, Are we all in here? Like, not for travel rations? He walked in. He said he walked in. Yeah, I walked in for... Rations. For, 
Yeah, he's get, he's getting some dried up rations. I'm that's so fleshy for the five silver for the rations. Mm -hmm. How many was that? Uh, I'll give you I two. Blankets? Medical, medical, work. Eh, I'll have give you five. Because they're old. Uh, I have a short bow. One of them expressed interest in hunting. I figured we'd get a short bow, if not two. Um, I'm gonna go buy a bunch of sets of tools. Sure, okay, so you walk in. I want, uh, I, ah! want I want potatoes. You see a I little want, small a gnome. Black, I want a, black, a set of blacksmith tools. Those will run you maybe about a gold. Okay, I uh, need two sets of woodworker's tools. Yeah, that's 50 silver. Gotcha. Um, One set of artisan tools. Boy, oh, you're writing this down because I'm not. Yeah, that's fine. What else you got? Give me the whole list and maybe we can just compile it together. I don't, I don't pay attention. Okay, so these woodworking tools. tools, artisan tools, two sets of woodworking tools, one set of artisan tools. Everything else, they're probably carpenter carpenter tools. Yeah, are those there's, woodworkers? There's, there's, there's woodworkers. Uh, I, I don't know. There's also like masonry tools, but I think most of the house is wood. Um, That's stone. A lot of it above ground is stone mm, with like clay and wood. Oh, so I'd say it's like probably seventy five percent stone. Will most likely work with the stone. You guys can patch the house with wood easily. Stone, though, to make it perfect, that'll take some time. Carpenter tools is what you're trying to find. How much are they if you haven't pulled up? How much are they? Yeah, does it say? Wait, I can fabricate walls. Oh, they can mold, isn't yes. it? Hey, so, like, I just need a big Pull piece of stone for, okay. the, for the stone walls. Yeah. Alright, go on. Carpenter tools, um, tools. I say that to them. Um, okay. I think that's all this is a 10 GP. Alright, so for everything? Just for those tools. 50 gold. So yeah, what? What? Are, what? Two? So woodworkers' uh, tools, wood carvers. How do we get to fifty gold? Are, are one or one gold a piece of pop? Right? Oh. We're like in we're in Memphis, which is a small town, so it might be. So what you got? Right, that's why he went. So what you got? Tools, Carp tools, tools, carpenter tools. Carpenter tools are eight gold. Yes. Are we anything else? Did you want? I think that's it. I think that's the tools. tools for the store. No, I I can use fabric. All right, we'll say we'll say twenty gold. Any, uh, any materials? I'm gonna wait until everybody... No materials! Alright, and he just goes... Poof. Now! Come back! Fuck this! Can you help me? I can't, I can't actually lift this Are bag. you guys inside? Yeah, yeah we would want. Alright, so they walk in. This bag of okay, tools! No, this is everything you want? You hand them on this. this. Is, you, just, you just drop this it is down. I have compiled currently. Wait, I have two skeletons that can carry these tools. Correct. With us? Margaret! Yeah. <laughs> we need a big rest! Did you just have the skeletons like out? Yeah. No. Nobody's out. mentioned the giant skeletons. Wait, 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 wait. wait. And he looks at you. And he kind of pulls down some, and you know, this is a small dwarf or gnomish man. Do you guys help with the elementals? Yes. Yes. Oh! Give me 50 gold and you can have it all! Cut your deal! Thank you! We didn't think anybody would come to our aid. Uh... But, uh... Yeah, we've... we've that's a broom! Here. It's not magical, right? I don't have that! The broom? What a broom? It's just a regular broom. Oh, yeah, yeah we got those. You, you Margaret! Have, it's normal! Do you have one? Like, like, I don't, <laughs> but I... <laughs> if I have a half-cousin who does! I want, like... Really? I want, yeah, Percy! If I... Oh, Percy! Percy. Everybody knows him, oh, yeah! Uh, yeah, Albertine! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. We know. Yeah, we're customers. But, uh, thank you again. Yeah. Is this all you'll need? They might need more food. This one, he's made of metal. Yeah. I don't know I what don't he eats. Either. So I like, we don't want potatoes. We need food Basic and food farm stuff. stuff. Just give him a bag of stuff. <laughs> yeah, two bags. Uh, this can we divide this gold? I'm gonna be anxious if I don't get potatoes. You see uh, uh, another gnomish woman coming out very old, like probably pushing 150. Like these are old. Yeah. She's walking out, and the bag is just like some big wicker basket, and you see it just with like veggies, lots of <laughs> potatoes, red potatoes. Cool. She pulls them out. There's also I put some meats in there. But they're not gonna last more than a day. They're going rotten now. I'd eat them soon. Uh, I'm gonna start shooting him with Ray of Cold. And you just see her hands just kind of 
almost did, and she just pulls it back. She sits it down, and then you just keep shooting it. Yeah, it might. That'll last a little longer. Yeah. Um, do you also have, like, a place that, like, what's, what's what kind of stone is our tower made of? Did anybody, does anybody fucking know stone masonry? None of us are dwarves. From what it's you can... Stone. It's lots of it's stone. Uh, stone masons, two doors down, he's got a building. Um, with most of the buildings that have been knocked down, there's lots of loose rubble for somewhat cheap. Though it may be different colorations. Uh, I don't give a fuck what color it is. Do you, do you know of anywhere I can get seeds for crops? I can sell you those. Okay. Jeremiah! Jeremiah! God damn it. He gets up for a moment and he goes walking over. <laughs> God damn it, Jeremiah! I told you! And he pulls some and you see this large glove just come walking out of the back. And he's got this huge sack, like a wooden plank over his shoulders, and it's just road with tons of seeds. It's done it. This is what I have. This time of year, what what's uh, what's being planted? Mm. What are you trying to do? Feed yourself? Or prefer compete? Compete? Oh no! Either oh, 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 oh. You haven't heard of the great growing competition? No. I won't. Magical creations. Oh. The biggest vegetables. Once a year. Oh. The end of the elections. The great feast. It's a festival we held. And oh, the big ones. They're huge. So it depends. Do you know how to pitch magic that helps plants grow? Yeah, I literally have a spell that like doubles like the harvest of crop for a year. Yes. Yeah. You should probably compete that year. That's kind of cheating. <laughs> but he said it was ma- he said it was magical crops. So I have a feeling other people know this exact same magic. Right. So uh, yeah. Is there specific seeds for this? Uh kind of depends on. Your flavor, you're going for style, for Zam. You know, some people sculpt them down. Oh, yeah. Make them look like themselves sometimes, or even great figures of the past. Interesting. Or you could just eat them. I was gonna say, I don't know if I have enough free time for that this year. Neither do I, but I've always wanted to. I might attend. When is that? You said uh, the end of the year? Elections are getting ready to start in about. Two months, so probably three, three, four months, okay. and we'll be feasting. Okay. Okay. So we're gonna start farming. What would Jeremiah best... stand still? What would be you the see, best seed? Just kind of yeah. What would be the best seed to purchase to like feed our homestead and also sell extra? You got any allergies? I, like I don't eat food, so like. Well, well then, I feel that's like, a weird question to ask. I feel like winter wheat. I mean, it's cold here. Oh, you, you want to grow now? Well, in the winter, we we grow here in Albazine, Inventus, everywhere. We have seed that can withstand the cold. Perfect. Yeah. But is that what you want? Yeah. We have the winter bloom. Okay. What that Just do? produces basically like this flower wheat like material. Okay. We can make breads, croissants, all kinds of things with it. Okay. All right. So let's do that one. Other ground root vegetables, maybe. Yeah. You kind of look and you just see I'm like an the arraignment. Games. They're all not the same. They're they're pretty cheap. You can honestly, to fill out about ten acres of farm, you guys have about fifteen, almost twenty. Wait farm. a minute. Why don't we just get some like barley or something for our alcoholic cleric? Uh, well, I don't think that's a problem. My father. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why they got me. Yeah, yeah but sometimes you gotta have. <coughs> I appreciate that you care. <clears throat> we have that. I, I it's think... a little bit pricey because sometimes the fields get destroyed. I feel. I mean, honestly, we could make potato vodka. Ooh. I don't know what that is, but it sounds good. Yeah. Why would, Why do you know how to make potato? Why would I? You see Jeremiah, he's getting, he's sweating, holding up all this weight, and he's just like, Ugh. 
Stand still, Jim. <laughs> the pain, the pain. We're gonna take some of the the winter bloom you were speaking of, the mm -hmm. thing that we make bread. We're gonna and take you just some see him. He just pulls out a huge sack and he just starts tying it up. This will this will do about five square acres. Okay. How much? Man, three. I, I got. Two. You guys helped us out so much. It's food. I got fifty gold. But anything else? Five acres worth of winter bloom. Uh, and then we have some potatoes. Um, potatoes I'm probably going to eat. Do you have any, um... Huh? You're not my list back. Oh! <laughs> yeah. Sorry! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like... My eyes deceive me sometimes. Do you have any, uh, medical herbs? I don't. No. Though we... Out here in Adventure, it's <sighs> hard to come by? Not here at Hexwell, sorry to say, they are very expensive. But media, they get the main travel. Audre is where many of the wildflowers grow. You need medicine of magical or of any type, that is the best place to go. Okay. Is there any other business? Uh, we don't need any bandages? Meat? No, I can get you some basic bandages. Medical supplies? Used? No. Oh no! Yeah, yeah I got this. I just fucking... <laughs> yeah, Jeremiah. Uh, Jeremiah's busy. Um, I'll get you. And he walks to the back. Kit? Huh? A healer's kit. I don't have one of those. Sorry. Do you have finger stools? He comes you back after a few me. moments after no, rummaging through. You see, basically, like huge just rolls just of wads just of pads that he lays okay. out. Um. He weighs them down. Tools. I just want gold for these. Two sets of yeah. woodworker's tools. You guys yeah. want anything else? I have okay. burned these yet. <laughs> anything else? So, an alchemical jug? <clears throat> no, I will tell you the axes that you got, yeah, say they that. are pretty damn nice. Um, it seems like people are pretty active in like repairing their houses. So a lot of the tools you guys get are like actually really well made. Because they seem to use them quite a bit. Yeah. You had cooking utensils and shit on there, like yeah. pots, pans, yada yada. And like, what's the what's the thing called? For you? Like the metal piece that holds a pot over a fire. Um, a tripod. Like a spit. Like, like a spit. Like a spit. if you're making soup, it would just sit there. My dad always called it a tripod because <laughs> yeah. it was like a triangle. Yeah, it was yeah, three yeah. legs that hung over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's probably called like a cauldron. The or it, oh, the, the cauldron's a pot, so yeah. um, uh, I don't know. Let's call it a tripod. We, we, we know what you're talking. About. We call it a tripod. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think I think we're good. If we can't get any medical. If you need anything else, we'll come back. That's your own business. Did we catch your name? Oh, it's Jamal. Jamal? Yeah. Okay, cousin to Percy. Percy's half oh, cousin. No, cousin but, yes. No, I, I asked for that. Do you have any magical items? What? An alchemist. What's it called? What's the item called? An al uh, al alchemist. Yeah, an alchemy jug or whatever. Yeah, an alchemy jug. Mm -hmm. I don't have one. Do you know where I could get one? Percy's probably got one. Alberzine. Most you... magical items are not here. Sorry, no. though. We are a poor town. Sorry to say. Do you have anything about? Of course, if you're gonna offer, thank you. Oh, oh these are gummies. All right, so you guys done with your shopping escapade? Ah, uh, now we're gonna work out we the need, store. We need to buy a shitload of stones. You go and you walk the door and you yeah. turn to them. Like give us the whole store. <laughs> no, no, we 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 sure we'll turn the lock and we spend the second. Oh god, bye. You better be careful with those, Wade. Those are amazing. Yeah, he's already half. <laughs> <laughs> we, I bought them. Dude, those are weak. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're bigger. There's All right, so like is there any, oh, is there anything else? I can't think of things. Did Grendridge came with us? Uh, Grendridge separated and yeah, went with the two, two girl, girl, or the twins, actually, yes, to go one, get. One is a girl, one is a boy. Yep. Okay. Riven and Reeser. Yeah. rolls, yeah. They gave you about half that for free. Uh, about three quarters of it for free. Just because you guys um, helped out with the town. I can use fabricate to make more. I think we're... 
have to go to the I think anything more exotic, we'd have to go to Albertine. We had to go to Albertine anyway, so we did some shopping in Albertine. How much food, how much, how long, how much food did we get? Like how many days were it? Uh, I'd say probably at least a week. Okay, we should probably expand that, because we don't know how long we're going to be in Albertine. In a three-day trip, and whatever happens in Albertine, boy, I really hope it's only in a day, but... <laughs> yeah, we probably all do. Be, <laughs> probably going to be like two days. But two technically, days. you know, if some should happen. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, to be fair, we could just leave gold here for them, thinking. and they can make the trip. Yeah. We, could, we could probably take the smaller carriage. The yeah, we just leave extra oh, gold with the guy that's gonna buy two horses here. That's gonna get the car storage shit. containers. Okay. Oh, we can get you some of those. The chest and whatnot. Yeah, they'll just run about um, about a gold piece. But how many do you think you'll need? Um, how many kids do we got? Seven. Seven chest? Sixteen eight. Currently we'll have eight. We'll have oh, eight. Right. If, we're, if we're taking the girl yes. home, we'll have eight kids. Yes. Nine if you keep her. That's her, I mean, that's her choice. Like, I'm not gonna be like, you, you look, you look, you look, surprise adoption. I guess we'll see yeah, how, her, that, like, how her grip is. It's not old. kidnapping. Come here, little girl. I guess we could meet your great stage. You, see, you like, owe us to to live here. <laughs> to be happy, damn it! <laughs> Love us. All right, so, so you guys done? Now. You guys done? I I think so. All right, so you guys heading back, dropping like off. Ten storage containers. Okay, so you get ten storage containers, and I'll just say you guys want a little bit more food just to sure. ease your mind. Yeah. So we'll say for about another fifteen gold, you guys get easily two more weeks of food. And the ten storage containers. Huh. Um, you guys then load everything up into your two carriages. Uh, after a few moments, you notice Grandridge meets back up with you, and they have loads full of clothes. Um, tons of them, actually. It seems as if they hit a pretty sweet deal. Whether or not they'll like them or half of them will fit, you'll see. But um, oh, they seem to work. You guys load it all back up, and you guys make your way about another 20, 25 minutes back, and at this point it's about uh, 11, 11.30, almost noon in the after, um, or in the afternoon. Hold on, hold on, hold on. We need to discuss the arrangement of horses to thunder to... to right, right. Right, right, right. We Do we talk. need to swap them? Are you loading everything to one, or... <laughs> We're back in the house. So, you guys make it back, and you guys We're start unloading everything. Um, as you guys get out, you notice that some of the orphans come out, and Lawden comes out. They start helping you guys unload and everything. You guys get everything into the main landing and whatnot. Some of it doesn't, you know, kind of fit very easily, so you guys take it, I would say, uh, down one level and start just kind of easily putting it in that way, you know, it's out of the weather and whatnot in case there's anything um everybody seems to be pretty in good spirit now uh, they have food everybody kind of starts you know just munching on stuff um oxford immediately gets his axe which he is excited for and has been kind of staring at all the way back home and as soon as he gets out you just see him like i'm gonna go cut down those trees so i'll be back um i'll do as much as i can uh, and he's just I'm I can't wait. Follow him, make sure he does not give himself. So you kind of immediately go out and you just see there's like a, a small tree that's starting to grow. And you see him, he just takes it, just wham, and he just smashes it in the dirt, just completely annihilating it. Like he's got some decent form. Like I pictured he was going like missed. Go nope, he uh, he seems to be pretty pretty decently. Cut down trees. Yeah, he he likes physical oh, labor from what you can tell. Um, so does this kid not, like he's not gonna. Like, Accidentally kill himself. I mean, he's not the smartest. He might, but not on purpose. So, <laughs> not on purpose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's not suicidal. Yeah. He's kind of dumb. Yeah, he's just kind of dumb, but he really works his ass With off. Children, so. same thing. Yeah, is exactly. The roof of our tower made of? Um, from what you can tell, um, is it like was it like stone walls with like a wood top? Not so much wood, more like like a clay wood Palmer almost, like a, like a 50-50 base. Like imagine like wood with like slabs of like clay that has been like hardened on top with almost like a you saying like is it clay or is it more like a concrete like? no not concrete it's more clay that okay. seems like it's tiles almost kind of the best you could imagine um other question how much like if i got a broom and like swept up in the house stone is there from like the 
I mean, you have a couple big chunks, but uh, from what you get a lot of just dust and debris, I'd say maybe a, a decent pile, like a square foot. Nothing like not, not, insane. Not a decent amount, not like enough right. to fix it with fabricated. No. No, we need some rocks. <laughs> yeah, you're not I'm like. I'm gonna tell Abe to go get a bunch of rocks. Okay, so uh, Abe just kind of goes off and he just slowly around the establishment where there have been fallen larger pieces just starts making a pile kind of off in a distinct area next to the establishment. It'll take him a while. I just want, I want him to give me the biggest one right now. Okay. There's like a, is there like a huge rock? It's like a slab. Oh, I wouldn't oh, say like a rock, more like a slab of like the wall that is kind of just <laughs> kind of falling over and you I'll see it kind of. I can. All right, so you guys kind of go around and just over what you can. I just can. need to be able to see it when I cast Fabricate to fix it. Uh, tomorrow, I can cast Erupting Earth, which means I literally just <laughs> rocks out of the ground, so. Okay, so I just need this we'll one to fix it. We'll, we'll do that another day, but yeah. All right, so you kind of get at least one wall up. You kind of go over, and some of the walls that have, like, fallen down and have kind of misshapenly kind of busted, you kind of... Push back up and kind of oh, lay no, back. I, no, I'm going to use the raw materials of this fallen wall to fix the roof. Use oh, the okay. Wall later. Yeah, okay, I, the so roof is, the roof is priority. right. Okay, so then you start piling some on top, no, rounding it's, off it's, and encapsulating. It's, it's magic. Well, like it embeds in. It, it, it like deletes this rock and fills in the holes. Okay, so it's just like some putty, just smoothing yeah, sure. it in with the fabric of the concrete and the rock that you're finding. After about, I'd say, 20, 30 minutes of going around and finding some, you're managing to do so, and then it takes you about another hour to do so properly. But what is everybody else doing? You guys doing anything major? Okay, so before you go to that, is anybody else doing anything at the estate? Me. Uh, I'm going to go down to the first level below okay. the landing, yep. which is essentially most of dirt, right? Um, and then I'm going, uh, I'm going to fucking, how, how thick is the floor between the first basement and the second basement? I'd say about four feet. Okay. You know. Um, and so I'm going to start kind of digging some holes. I'm going to start cutting up potatoes. Make it an indoor garden. Yep. Got you. Yep. Okay. So you want to, are you going to plant them? I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna plant them, uh, and then I'm going to. Okay, now the, the square footage of this room is gonna be, it's about almost seven to, actually, it's about four, that's about 1500 feet, actually. Mm -hmm. So, it's about, how big of an area do you want? This room right here, it just for comparison, mm -hmm. is about 400 square feet, or it's about 300, 350 square feet. Maybe 400? Um, I'm going to want enough potatoes. This room would definitely feed everybody. Feed everybody. Maybe potatoes. half this room with just potatoes would feed everybody for probably. That. Because you got to think. I think they only need like a foot or two in between. Yeah, they grow not, wild. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They grow wild. Okay, so. yeah. While he's doing that, I want to um, tell Abe after he moved that wall mm -hmm. for me to follow the who's cutting down trees okay ox bring all the trees to like one specific spot and so he's helping everybody right. that'll speed it up a little bit we do it for alverzine today or tomorrow tomorrow grandridge says okay <laughs> was it slurred like he was drunk yeah he's just yeah. like please put it off more <laughs> then i'm gonna i'm gonna begin casting plant growth uh which is gonna be the next eight hours of my life Okay, so you guys are all just working on the homestead. So, seeing him, seeing like, I'm gonna be like, where are you going? The, far, the farmhouse is over there. Okay, so while you're growing, you wouldn't have seen this. You though. I would. You would. You would see him starting to kind of just walk off the estate a little bit, off towards your, through your farm a little bit, essentially. That's all you know. He hasn't said anything. Uh, I'm gonna fuck off and read the Betrayer of Flesh. Got you. I know the book. Yes. yes. <laughs> it's not <laughs> ominous at all, guys. It goes back in my broom closet, turns on the little, <laughs> the little green desk lamp, and it's like, gal, 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 gal. That, crap. that one right there. <laughs> yeah, right there. <laughs> yeah. I feel like maybe you should let us know if you're gonna wander. 
<laughs> Let's say that I have sending but I also used up all my level three spells. So. Yeah. <laughs> so you don't. Nope. All right, I'm coming with you. Oh. I'm coming with you. All right, so you start walking off, and he's just kind of tailing you. He's like, yeah, I know. Friendly next to you. Um, you guys are just kind of walking. Now, it is about a mile to this farmhouse. You guys, it extends almost to the opposite end of your land. Um, you guys make it there. Now, while they're walking, anything else you guys are doing? Uh, while I was planting potatoes, were there any of the children interested in... Uh, there is... Plants? Yes, there is one. Thank you yeah. for asking. Yes. I was like, I'm going to incorporate children. Child labor kids. Well, yeah, Getting a use of our child slaves. That worked. 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 Yeah, there's like a whole there's like a whole theme with like um, the child labor. Sydney, Sydney. She's somewhat interested, even though it is completely out of her realm. She tells you she's mostly good with fabrics. Yeah. But seeing you bring in all these seeds and doing stuff, she's bored. And she and uh, the twins are both pretty interested. In, and the twins are usually just helpful at everything. You, it is. I have a spell that'll fix that. I just need rubies. I gave away my gems. I need rubies. Yeah. <laughs> For my indoor garden to work. <laughs> yeah, uh, well, kind of. That's actually a different spell. Good thing they grow underground. Yeah. So. Did you get some kind of light from the store? I didn't have a torch. You did not have a light from the store. I even if you wanted. I don't have any magical lights. Um, let's see, we could have got some entrance. Hold on. That is one third level spell slot. That do not produce UV light, so. So, so I thought I, 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 I was have to, Do I need a roll for reading my book? Uh, yeah, yeah, you can do when you get back. I think that was more so. Or you, you can roll out or when you get back. I know. I was making it. <laughs> I was making a joke, sorry. I also have the spell Daylight, no, which not. is literally just. Right. Um, that one I don't have right now. That one last funny thing is I bought my own and I don't know how he always replaces the spoils. Hmm? It's constant. I'd rather just buy I don't use it enough. You know, might as well just buy some of my charge and then when it's done I'll buy another one. I was gonna say, I mean I have produced like that. I, like I got I got torches. Because I have a really amazing one that we could just do. <laughs> exactly like that. Like that colorful one. It, like it just cartridge. Yeah. Uh, either, either way, uh, I'm gonna have a child help me. Uh, it's fine. So you have three. Um, yeah. Two of the females, Ribbon mm-hmm. and Reese, are come down and help you, and then Sydney yeah. comes down. You guys go through, you cut up some, and you start playing them around, and you, you have a couple, they just grab a couple holes and just <laughs> plant them just underneath, and you're just like, eh, we could get more out of them if we, you know, and they spread them out, but it takes you about an hour, and you, you have some fun, you connect with them, and you bond with them. Um, you guys. Are venturing off now the snow is still falling but you can see not quite as foggy under the complete darkness and as you guys are walking out there you guys make it out there in about 20 30 minutes as you do so you see a very downtrodden farmhouse um it's only one story it's kind of got like a oval half arced um building with like what looks to be like some tarp that was there at some point you see a, do- a bunch of different stalls that could probably hold up to like 30 or 40 animals, but they're all empty. And as you guys go up and look, you see a couple skeleton corpses that have just rotted over the years that have obviously not been attended to and have died in their pens. Um, as you guys go up, you see a couple like feed troughs that are completely empty with like hardened food that is like crusted and frozen into the edges. And you see a bunch of like what look to be um, like seed bags in an area that looks like someone at some point was starting to extend this like stable into like a half stable half actual farmhouse which was completed with like what was needed to farm the land you see what looks like some I'd say equipment that would dig into the land digging you know like a trowel down to plant seed and whatnot kind of rusted downtrodden but you can tell it's operational you would just need something to pull it um an animal something and you could possibly start harvesting the land if you could rid the snow 
So is possibly the issue. As you guys just kind of look around, you see after you kind of compile everything that the snow on your land is about three feet deep everywhere. <clears throat> and if you could get rid of that, you could start growing these crops through. You have some of the equipment to at least get it started with the natural elements, you know, you could probably get it started. If you want to know anything else, what does the inside of the house look like? I would say it's a house. It's mace. Uh, imagine hay that has been just not attended to for about a year. It's very scattered, very thin, um, dirt everywhere. It's almost like a uh, T shape, you know, but with an elongated top T and a very narrow bottom T. You walk in and it's very long with um, basically stalls lining each side and then you see on the back basically like where they started to build an encapsulation but the end part didn't get finished or it would have completed the rest of this farmhouse where you could start you know storing things possibly like food um you also see there looks to be like a small as you guys investigate a little bit further an underground area where there's what well, looks like labels in common of like ice bins where people have been collecting like ice areas to store food Though they have all dried out. There's no ice down here. Though it looks like at some point people have, you know, collected crops or meat or something and have brought it down here and have used the ice or something from the land to store the food longer. Almost like a freezer or a cooler. That's about the most that you guys kind of find just by looking around. If you want to know maybe more, you guys give me an investigation check. If you guys want to look deeper. There it does. <laughs> a six you look around um you notice that there's some fresh tracks probably from some individual like theo that was probably here recently as 13. wife told you um as you look around though you notice that the place is really well made even though it hasn't been used but if you just cleaned it up a little bit at least the sable portion is probably decent you fix a couple parts of the roof and it's ready to go the rest of the farmhouse though you need to at least complete the roof and the whole back half of the wall for at least that place to be operational for anything there's no like living quarters that were being made or um, anything? not from what you can tell you can see that there is like a small what looks to be like a broken down kind of like at some point maybe someone lived here you know like maybe a farmhand that was hired permanently but not anything Any materials other than a couple like i'd say you find a couple wood planks that are kind of like building materials that were propped up against the walls but you know you might be able to finish um some of it uh i'd say maybe 20 gold worth or of uh, lumber which is a decent amount but you'd have to you know cut it finish it but it's there just no one finished the job we at least have a pretty much stable just gonna put open yeah, the, the sable's pretty much probably ready to go, but the farmhouse, not so much. So these seed bags, are they full of seeds? As you look, you rip them open, you see tons of seed. You see a top layer, kind of been frosted over from the weather, but as you kind of sift it through, tons of what looks like just seed. All the same kind, and you just pile through. It's about, I'd say, three feet tall and about two feet wide. You see two just huge barrels of them. Uh, I mean, do I know what they are? Uh, give me an intelligence check. <laughs> <laughs> you can look at them too, yeah. Both of you can give me an intelligence check. <laughs> Fucking no. I rolled a zero. <laughs> <laughs> you look at them and you're like, <laughs> you grab one and you eat it and you're like, Eight. Uh, we don't eat these. <laughs> eight. Um, yeah, eight. Just like, what you look at them. I am not. After searching for seeds recently and buying some, I think you may have seen some, but you're not quite sure what these are. But you have a shitload of them. We It's like. Oh no! These are huge. Just like take a little cup. Yeah, you could probably. Yeah, okay. So you scoop some up. All right. So you, you both just take a handful, put them in your you know pocket or whatever. And, and I'm gonna walk over to those bones and be like, huh? Kill the these. All right. So you and walk over. As many bones like okay. You grab them and as you grab them, you notice that they're most likely some sort of cow or pig bones. You do so and you grab them and you you see that there's two pins with them and you grab some about no two piles of bones actually. Um, is there anything else you guys want to do? Right. Now, 
as you guys are getting ready to, you know, make your way back, I need you guys both to give me a person. Yep. Okay, so both of you, as you guys are like, just kind of talking to yourselves, being like, oh, you know, oh, we found some stuff, like, we gotta tell the others. You guys start walking by, and just both of you, at the corner of your left peripheral view, swear, just for a moment, see, like, this dark, shadowy figure. You're over for a moment, and you see nothing. There's just an empty field. You both kind of look to each other, and you both are like, "Do yeah, that, you know?" I kind of fast pitch back, like, like sweet. Okay, so you guys, first in your pace, and you're like, oh. "You make it back." Um, we got shadow figures out there, and Frederick's yeah. just shadow figures. What do you mean? We both saw something, we're not sure. We just. We got back here as best. If it was also, I would prefer a group of sisters. Are you putting on my leg? No, go out there and check yourself. I'm seeing it's broad of day. I can see most of the field. There's nothing out there. Well, you go there by yourself and see the attacks. Did it attack you? No, but. If we went and checked. What did it look like? Clear. Dark figure. <laughs> he kind of just narrows his eyes at you. I'm not drunk yet. Hmm. <laughs> give me a persuasion you check. Me no, day I right saw it too. Give, me a, give me a persuasion <laughs> check. One of you can do it if you would like to aid the other at advantage. I'm pretty good at it. Plus three for you. Let's see. Oh. <laughs> I rolled a 19, so Ooh. it'll be like 20. So you saw a shadowy figure in the fields. He grabs his sword just a little bit. We just got here. Well, that's a little discerning. You see anything else? Nothing in the He just looks out the, the window a little bit. pretty cool. Found some seeds and bones from the <laughs> But beyond that, I'm in the broom class, so say, who is he? Who are we even talking about? Just Gregory, yeah. <laughs> I mean, and he's an underground one story and he's in the broom closet, so I'm you a, walked in. I'm hanging out with plants. Yeah. And he's now, two kids. Exactly. The rest of the orphans, after a moment, they kind of lean forward. Shadowy figure. Some of them look somewhat startled. Gregory, don't worry, they're just. Seeing things. Now, hold on, hold on. Have any of you kids seen anything like that around here? You see one individual. Island. Last night when I was sleeping, the swan saw someone just for a moment peer in through the front window. But I wasn't sure. Someone or something. I don't know. It was just dark. Almost like. Not even so much a silhouette. Almost like a form that was. Dark, black. It formed just in front of the window for a moment before it disappeared. I thought I might have been dreaming, but now that you say something, I'm not quite sure. This was cursed ended. Yeah, tonight we should watch him. Let's see if we can see him. My character, Hugo! He's just like shuffling. <laughs> and I just like fall out of the door. <laughs> I found some fire for you. Nice. <laughs> Are you him in bone sack. Also, the Go farmhouse ahead. is pretty cool. We could really get something going here. <laughs> nice. Gredridge, he doesn't give a f <laughs> This guy, he just cares about self. <laughs> I fixed the roof. Oh. Touche. Get, drink, get drunk and bought clothes. Touche. <laughs> yeah, like All right, so as you guys are just kind of hanging out, are you guys doing anything the rest of the day? 
You guys just hanging out, working on the house up? The, the plane, still casting. The plane growth takes uh, eight hours. So you know, at the end of that eight hours... Uh, All right, so we'll say while that's going on, you guys are just tidying up the house, or is there anything else you guys want to work on? All right, so we'll say we'll say the bottom floor with some of the wood that you see Oxford bringing back in the makeshift stuff that you're able to create. The bottom floor and the roof are good. You still need to start repairing or at least patching up the second and third floor walling to you know at least make it livable. Yeah. And at least enclosed, but for the most part, the rest is good. So as you guys do that, while he's down there growing plants, it's starting to become about evening. Is there anything you guys want to do for the rest of the day? I'd say, is there anything major that you guys um, want to do before Albert? What's his name? The uh, butler. Lauden. Lauden. About hire a bunch of people over here to finish. Fixing How many? This. You want me to hire what? Workers. Carpenter, stonemasons, repair. What's my budget? That's uh, a good going rate. Right? I, I believe we discussed Did this. <sighs> yeah, but we don't. We haven't discussed this since we've made our own repairs. Right? Yeah, it was a thousand gold to probably get everything yeah. habitable. Yeah. Now, um, now that you guys have gotten the first floor, I'd say probably about seven hundred, maybe six hundred gold to get the not the roof because he fixed the roof. Probably, I'd say about five hundred gold yeah. to. Cheaply get everything enclosed, yeah. livable, you know, out of the elements, mm -hmm. every room available. So we're looking at 500 gold. It would probably take three ish days. Can I say everybody just donate? I mean, yeah, four of four of those green, right? I mean, yeah, I mean, you can <clears throat> live here too. Oh, I'm paying. We're all popping in 100. Well, am I popping in that pipe? I mean, you do anyway. Yeah. All right, then I'm throwing in a hundred. That's funny to you. And by the way, that craft, it's magnificent. I'm going to need to know when we go to Abazine, Percy, yeah. he needs to make me one if I'm not killed or thrown in jail. Uh, but I want mine to be green. <laughs> Who was giving a hundred gold? Yes. I could spot him. I'm not too concerned about money. All right, so 500 gold, we can make that happen then. Juan kind of looks around. Is there anything else? I'll take care of the kids. They're not to leave the house while you're gone. At least the estate, right? Yes. Not um, and no. Also, when I'm not no. here, um, I can only give these skeletons like one order. We don't like, need that. We don't need protection. Doesn't the new skeletons only last 24 hours? No, they last indefinitely until yeah. they die. But did they last? The, 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 the last hostile. The last yeah. no, the last command I give them before they run out, they follow until they die. I really? Thought, I yeah, so if I say guard this door. Look it up, Brian. What spell is this? Um, um summon or yeah, emanate dead. I I'm pretty them. sure that's the one that's like they're, I don't know if they're they're been possible. Possible. It's not the biggest deal. Months. We'll look it up. If you want to do that and you're wrong, they'll be attacking children. Just have them die. Okay, so Maybe. just to be on the safe side, so what are you doing? Walden looks at you guys. I, I, I'll just take Buck myself. It doesn't matter. Okay. Do you want me to look after the children? Mm -hmm. I'll hire some workers. I'll prepare some food, and we'll also try and tidy up some of the second floor. We'll water the plants, but not too much because there's not a light source, right? As he looks at Orem. What? The light source, there's none downstairs, so how do we water the plants and not rot them? Do we not water them until you come back? So, give me a couple more hours, I think. I'm working on a spell that'll help. It'll, uh... It'll... You know what we could do? If it's only one story down, I was thinking about something. If we dug a hole through the ground at an angle, yeah. we might be able to create some sort of light deposit. We probably should have started growing mushrooms. Oh, I was thinking about that. I, I need to make take a trip into the forest, see what I can conjure up. We're all not the best, but we're trying. So... That's also totally fine. It's possible. 
Uh, do we need guards? You keep saying, should we just hire someone to keep watch while you're not here? A guardsman. Someone to just defend the place. Is there anyone in Inventus you trust? You have gold. I'm sure if you just pay someone like 40 or 50 gold, they'd probably stay on for a salary base for a couple months. Hell, I'd lie to you and tell you I'd defend the place for 50 gold. Yeah, we already know you're not really much of a fighter. Exactly. So I'm saying, you know, if we need a god, maybe if you find someone along your travels, it's worthy. We need some people to defend us. Especially if you're always leaving. If we're growing crops and doing this, and you kind of look around the area, no one grows that many crops or has that many animals. So if you guys are going to do that, like, above table, you're probably going to be, like... Drawing some attention. Yeah, drawing attention. Or, you know, people might steal your shit. Just saying. But he touches on that because it's known in the area you know some of the estates that are able to grow it have that issue so he just touches on it other than that i'm not quite concerned with our personal safety especially if you're back within the next two weeks we should be good we have food should we leave some emergency gold no, 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 that's just more for them to steal. We don't need more. If someone does come, it's better we have nothing. They'll go on. We have much more. They'll think we're hiding something. Take what you need. I've been a maiden before. Leave nothing behind. Or hide it better than just a chest. Oh, I was planning on, like, burying it. I so you're... Hurt. You know... While we have a moment, I just want to say that I appreciate you guys taking on this uh, state and helping me out. Yeah. Now the people living here won't draw so much attention to uh, what I'm doing with my parents. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so you can trust me, just know that. Now, enjoy your travels. I got things on lock here. But I'm going to need that 500 gold to get some people hired. Grendor just looks at him. Can we trust him, you guys? 500 gold? So, we can trust him. Uh, mostly because... He looks at you, deception check. <sighs> Not sure. <laughs> I believe we can trust him mostly because the, he has a reason to continue living here. His parents are only accessible via a tunnel in our basement. Fair enough. He just turns around. I guess we're going back to goddamn yeah. He just And he just sips on something and starts walking out the front door. I call the comfy carriage at least. I thought we were doing this tomorrow. Oh! Uh, are we? You, are you that drunk? You said tomorrow. I don't want to go. I'm sure, we <laughs> sleeping. Yeah. He just well, turns I... back around and walks back in the door. All right. Sleeping downstairs. With the potatoes? It's colder down there. A little bit. Well, I mean, there's a floor underneath that. But yeah. It's like two floors. I mean, it's cold everywhere here, but yeah. it's going to be extra cold tomorrow in Albazine. Oh, oh, I can just tell. I'll, uh, I'll cast Druid Crap time ever which literally predicts the weather for the next 24 hours it's it's not any different he's just being doom and gloom <laughs> <laughs> i was like all right I don't know. we'll be fine he's a drunk man a guard i mean a guard girl's got the worst spot right now right beneath her yeah i, I agree. all right so anything else before the slumber hmm? anything before the slumber so the plant grow is it finally past eight hours? So what, what does it do exactly? So I'm casting over eight hours, which means I enrich the land. All plants uh, in a half mile radius. Oh shit. So so within a half mile. And wait, you're doing this on the first floor, correct? It's in the house. So that's any plant. But I mean the first floor. The first basement, basement where the floor. potatoes are. Yeah. Okay. Uh, all plants in a half mile radius become enriched for one year. <sighs> The plants yield twice the normal amount of food when harvested. Does it say how quickly? 
Uh, I would assume that they grow at a normal pace. Okay, well. They just grow double the amount. As you grow these and you sit here, you notice that as the magic kind of tends to the plants, it's amplified by something. Potato and as you know this, you see them grow exponentially quickly. And I'd say the buds start sprouting within hours. And then they start turning almost into baby sprouts within the full eight hours. And you are in disbelief. The, the, the magic is not necessarily from you. You know this. Mm-hmm. And this is almost some sort of like... Catches you off guard, by the way. The kids are like, oh, these are growing so quickly. We'll have food. And then you look at them and there's almost like a, this is awesome, but almost like a, hmm, like concern almost. Wondering, like, I didn't do all that. Yeah. Wait, did he tell us of the metal? Who did tell No, I did not. Well, I mean, I assumed you guys would have heard the... Yeah, but that's all we heard. But know. they don't know what. Yeah, they're going to go down to bed with the no, They did it? No. We no. no. were, were, were pretty much we're used to Eileen. Or I'm just used to you just poking shit. Yeah. You guys fucking <laughs> fell in a hole again. Right? Uh, okay. All right. Did cool. you mention it doing weird shit? The plants? Uh, yeah. So I have a question. It's all plants within a half mile radius, the uh-huh. Ridge. Uh, does that affect the seeds in their pockets? Technically, it would. Does it affect the trees outside? There are no trees. Yeah. Everything from the storm has been just. You are in a very. I, was gonna say, I also plain, have. Like, yes. I also have that bag of. For about two miles and everywhere you look. The winter bloom flower shit. I got five acres worth of that shit. So. I would say everything. <laughs> even though it would enrich their seeds, I would say you don't notice any effect of anything that's not planted right away. Yeah, I think, yeah that's fine. Yes, it has to be planted. Uh, well, well, yeah. So have you mentioned it? I'm gonna play. Well, I mean, there's like this magic war down there that, like, made the gas noise and murder today. It concerns me that it kind of took my magic and made it not my magic, and that makes me worried. But it worked out in our favor, so I'm going to leave it alone for a while. Wait, there's magical metal. That's neat. Yeah, it it destroyed my old base. Huh. Okay. I remember I mentioned this sooner, but... Okay. Is there anything else we gotta do today? No, I'm gonna fuck off and read my book until we leave tomorrow. Okay, I'm going to, like, keep watch for, <clears throat> for however long I can before I have to take a... Mm-hmm. Say that one more time? I wanna take a, like, I wanna, like, take a watch. How you do it, I like I yep, I got you. I got you. So, as you're taking your watch and you read your book, you meet an intelligence check this time. And I need this to be a 20. What'd you roll? So, you're on the cusp of somewhat being able to possibly enchant some of your undead creatures with an extra element of possible frost or cold with their attacks as you summon them. You realize that as you look at this, that you may be able to make some of these creatures that you spawn even stronger. Then your time's up. You realize as you guys are going through and you're taking a watch, give me a perception check. Life. As now it is getting to about mid afternoon, about 4 or 5 p.m. I was going to do it. Start going to take long rests. Like, not like right now. I would assume, right? I mean, okay, so you guys. Are you now? Or are you like. I'm. Uh. I'm helping. I'm trying to figure out if the children are enjoying their new clothes. Okay, so you go upstairs and you you notice that some of the girls, I'd say for the most part, are kind of going through. They they do seem to enjoy their clothes. It's new. So, of course, they are enjoying anything. Some of them don't even fit properly, but Mm -hmm. it's better than things that they've had recently. And they seem to be enjoying them, and they somewhat praise you. You see them, they just kind of mess around for a little bit, trying on different clothing. Um, And then for a moment, they stop, and they start putting them together neatly back into different folds and piles, and then distributing them out to each other and trying to find at least a couple outfits for each one to have over the next couple of weeks. So that way, it's distributed evenly. Everybody seems to be being a fair sport about it. Um... What else? Anybody else doing anything before you guys want to take a long rest and sleep? 
About 2,000 square feet. So you got about, imagine like that other, you know, you have like that main room. Yeah. Imagine that's your landing. This would be like an adjacent room and then the back room and then like a bedroom. So imagine like this room on the opposite side of the landing. So you have like the landing and then two of these rooms on the sides and then one behind. When I meant to take my watch on mm-hmm. half from this on my like around myself. Okay. So I can't be seen and I can see around me. Okay. How many short bows did we buy? I did. Did I put that on the list? Yeah, I, I didn't. Put it on the list. I didn't. It, it's fine. Both. Okay. We have both. a short bow. In a long bow. For God, yes. I, had I the already wrote that bow. down. I'm trying to. Yeah. Kind of Damn. The the Alright, so you cast darkness so and this two logs. Right. right, and what are you doing? Okay, so as everybody, is there anything else before your guys' long rest? I want to write a letter okay. to Theo. Okay. And just leave it with Laden. And if Theo comes by, and just have Laden hand it to him. Okay. Say anything specific? Got you. Alright, so. so whenever you're ready for me to read this letter, just like. All right, we can, um, okay. All right, so anything else? No? All right, the watch. You guys repair a little bit more. You rest, you go through doing some of your things, tidying up, getting used to finally settling into your state a little bit, your home for once, resting, coming into your own. And then as you guys are all resting, Life decides to walk out. He casts darkness around one of the first floors and it kind of encumbers most of where you guys are sleeping and then he walks out. Give me a perception check. As now it's about 10, 11 p.m., completely dark as everybody starts to fall asleep. 14. So, you sit out front. The night, very cold. It begins to become somewhat foggy like it did once before. You wait an hour nothing really happens you sit there somewhat becoming bored for a minute starting to become cold a little bit and then you almost start to doze off for a moment take a swig from your flask and you kind of relax for a moment feel the warmth hit you and as you look up from after taking a drink you see faintly off in the distance almost like a shimmer image of like a dark shadow whisper just you know, off in your vision you blink once or twice wondering if your vision has escaped you for just that second you watch for a moment and you see a dark figure so far off in the distance you can't make out anything other than it stands as a humanoid but with a dark, almost shadow around it. You wait one more second, and you blink, and in a blink, it dissipates completely from vision. Nothing is there, but just the land before you in the fog as you see the wind blowing back and forth, the snow slowly emitting. You look around, Was you get in up. the same general direction as when the first time we saw it, or... <clears throat> Was it? So much, but a lot closer to your home. I mean, this is, you know, a lot closer yeah. now. So when we saw it, we were like, oh, <sighs> right, right. Now here and in your vision, it seems as if it, as you saw it, vanished. Almost, you're not quite sure if you just, you know, saw it as it was vanishing or if it vanished because you saw it. You're unsure. You wait a little bit longer. Nothing seems to happen. Okay. You, yeah, you wait about another hour and you go back and then you complete your long rest. You wait, you hear nothing, you fall asleep. You all complete the rest of your long rest. And you wake up to a decently early morning. Um, the sun is rising this time and it starts slowly melting some of the snow. You wake up, everything's fine. Fu- Excuse me. Everything's fine, nothing's disturbed. Everything's burning! No! Um, and now was you guys have the day before you. Was it snowing last night or just misty? It's almost always snowing in Albertine, but you notice that your land has some sort of, when it gets dark, 
almost like a misty haze that you notice is almost apparent in many of the regions in Albers or in Hexwell that are not encapsulated with like a city or a town. Um, almost like the barrens of the areas. You know, it's either like of a precipitate or of a melting snow, you know, how it kind of creates that fog as it melts. Kind of creates that where there's not a lot of population. Is. So, the next day, what do you guys want to do? You guys wake up. You have food. You prepare yourselves. I want to see if there's any tracks on that. Give me an investigation check. Okay. You look around, from what you can tell, there's nothing. Prendridge grabs the rest of his things. All right, I guess it's judgment time. <laughs> well, we have about today, day and a half trek, maybe two days, back to Albazine, depending on the weather. We have nothing else to do. Let's head out and uh, let's hope they uh, are in good spirits this week. Uh, uh, before we leave, I'm just going to pop down to the basement okay. where my potatoes are, make sure they're doing okay. They are still growing, and you notice they have grown even more since you've last touched them, and you realize that uh, some of the vines and stuff under the ground are starting to protrude out, growing almost, in some cases, half to a quarter-sized potatoes already. Damn. At this point, you could possibly believe that um, these potatoes may be full-grown within the next, like, two to three weeks. I'm gonna, I'm gonna help him out. I'm gonna cast daylight. All right, so you uh, create so, this light yeah, within. It's a six, yeah, it's a big ass fucking sphere of literally it's daylight. It's, yeah, it's big enough to encapsulate the whole area of where yeah. they're growing. Uh, and that just lasts for an hour. All right, so some of the vines that are protruding up out, they yeah. definitely I will can, get some I of can it. Just walk away. It yep. Stays there for an hour. Yep. So go, boop, turn the light on. Yeah. All right, so you guys, you take a moment. Is there anything else before you guys prep for Albertine? All right, you guys gather yourself, you prepare, you get the carriages, and everybody heads, leaving the orphans. Uh, we only need one carriage? I think we need to leave one carriage here. Okay. Yeah. Yes, you guys can. You guys are only taking the one dwarf girl. She's the only one that's interested in going back. Do we want to take the little carriage? And leave Terry, Terry's tours here? You should take a big carriage. Okay. It's, it might be a Oh, that's a good point. Are we taking both horses? But I feel like probably shouldn't. I feel like we should just take both horses. They don't need a carriage. They don't need to travel. You know, I, I don't want to leave them here. Either. You're not wrong. All right. What? <laughs> Take both horses? Alright, we'll take one horse. That's big. Big and a horse in my ape. Alright. Yeah. So you guys load up the Teddy's torch carriage. Nothing. You sense nothing. You, you cast it. Seems to be nothing evil in the area. You guys load up the carriage. Wait, did you guys say you saw a shadowy figure? Yeah, I thought that's all that me last night as well. You know, there's like a creature we pissed off that's also a shadowy figure, and it's like a type of creature that like has domain for shadowy creatures. Uh, FYI, this morning. <laughs> so as you guys do that, you guys load up the carriage, and you guys start slowly heading out with Grindridge, yeah. and we're gonna take a quick break right there. Okay, perfect. And then um. We'll pick up with you guys going through your travel. So we'll take a quick break right there. And then we'll be right back.
All right. So, is that from it? Thing? Yep, we're good. Everything we didn't mess up this time, guys. A full episode. <laughs> 100%. Yo, thank you for all the actual while we got saying it. Thanks for all the new subscribers. Anyway. Alright, so back where we're at. You guys have a Talberzine. You guys have your carriages. It's going to be about a two day travel. Now, you right. left this note, and yes, you can. You want me to read it, or do you want to read it? Yeah, you can read it. Yeah. Just give me a readout, and then you guys will be heading leaving out. Leaving a note for Tia. Yeah. Casey Sass Buddy. Says we will be leaving on business for some time and plan to return within two weeks' time. Hope to. We have made some repairs to the house we ma to make it more habitable for our adopted children and Laden, who will be looking after the estate while we are gone. The estate should be improved while we are gone as well. We plan on growing crops and restoring the farm to a working state, and we can discuss payment terms in the future. Talk soon. The Moonlight Rollers. Awesome. All right, so you leave that. You guys head out. Give me who is uh, anybody, who's driving. I right. drive. <clears throat> Animal handling check for whoever's driving. And it should be easy because one of them just follows simple commands. Yep. It is. National 19 plus oh, yeah. 8. Yeah, so easily. So you guys go for about the first day easily. You guys start taking a small little rest, letting some of the animals and... Gildor's Beast, just take a quick break. You guys take some small watches, and you guys start off on to day two. Almost about halfway there. The weather is still snowing. Still tons of thick snow that traverses your pathway. Day two, nothing really changes. You guys go to make a quick stop about, I'd say, a couple hours outside of Alberzi. As you guys do this, I need you guys to give me a perception check as you guys stop and at this point are getting ready to take a rest for the day knowing that you guys aren't too far out. 11, 9. 9? 9. 11. Alright, so 22. So you guys now, a decent ways away, probably about 50-ish miles from your state outside of Inventus leaving. You sit here probably about 10 ish maybe eight miles oh, Jesus. <laughs> Get in this line. maybe you know outside of uh, alberzine you can barely see the landscape starting to change as you get closer and as you guys are starting to get ready for the night you guys kind of peer off look around look for a decent place to stay and as you guys do so you guys start to settle in and everybody looks around and you don't see anything amongst most of the night except for you life as you turn around you notice most of your party members as well as Grendridge don't seem to really notice anything they start making camp they start setting up a small fire they start resting for part of the night but as you get out of the carriage you see off in the distance behind what looks like a small tree and brush very similar shadowy figure. You notice it just for a moment, and you see almost like these piercing yellow eyes that almost seem to emit like lights in the darkness. It seems to be about 150-ish feet, 200 feet off. And you barely catch it. You stare at it for a moment. It doesn't dissipate this time. Like a, hey, uh, we've been followed by the Shaga video. Shut up, <laughs> you look at it and it seems to take one step back behind the tree out of vision and then dissipates. You don't see anything for a moment. That's it. You look around, you don't see quite anything else. That's the only thing you seem to notice. It seemed to be watching someone so that you were just. Uh, give me a perception check. Because your first one was a 22? Mm -hmm. 17. It seems to just be noticing the party. Not necessarily you or a certain individual. Though you kind of noticed it, it seems to be possibly noticing everyone. You guys wait for a few more moments as he says this. Is anybody doing anything? Mm 
Is it still the first day or this like second day? This is the end okay. of the second day. So you guys have about you guys have about an eight hour ish trip left until you're in Alberzine. You know what I've been doing this whole time in this character. Yep. It's been reading the book. Kelly, there's zombies in it. Mm. All right. So you guys gather yourselves. You rest for the rest of the night. We keep in watch as well. You I'm guys be writing just some uh, papers of holy scripture. Okay. You guys go through the rest of the night. You hear some howls, but nothing crazy. Something maybe dire wolves off in the distance, but nothing that really startles you. You leave the fire, and it's okay. You guys wake for the next morning, and you start off. See Grendridge. Okay, guys, I'm starting to get a little bit nervous. Not gonna lie. I appreciate you all coming with me this far, though. Now... I'm not gonna lie. When we get there, just let me do some of the talking unless I really get myself in and I start just saying shit that doesn't make sense. Should we like contact Arlanda before he turns himself in? She has like some weight. Maybe she could help out. We could stop by the headquarters, you know. We should probably do that first. But by then we'll be inside Abazine. And if anybody notices us, which they're gonna notice me. Any god will. Okay. They're gonna stop us. Wait, I got something for this. Okay. Grab the other mining mask. Okay. Out of my bag. He just kind of looks at it. So, I was gonna say. I mean, it, I thought you were gonna say, "Take your death." Trying, trying to sneak him in is kind of a little more suspicious. I don't know what. I mean, are we really going to do that? I think we should. Agreed. I think both options are awful. Yeah, I mean, you're not wrong. But, but if he wears a mask and we get caught, we have plausible deniability. Yeah. Oh. And he just kind of hands you back the mask. I might need more of a get up than just a mask. And he kind of just looks around at the rest of his attire. I think they might notice me just by my stature. I've worked with these men for years, and, uh... I'm gonna guess since I've been missing, they're gonna be looking. So... Let's just play it by ear. We should probably contact her now with bullshit animal spells. Are any of these men involved in... ...in the genome? Not that I know of. What do you think? The little girl could get... Board safely back to her family. Maybe if you guys lead her there, yeah. I'll just make sure she makes it there to be safe. That's what I'm saying. If there was a guard. I mean, if we could find a guard, they could possibly escort her there. Yeah, save us some time. But I'm more worried about uh, them noticing me. Are there any notable guards in the city that you trust? Hmm, there's a couple, but the council will most likely have them overruled. They may be friends of mine, but, uh, yeah. they're not going to bend the law for me. Yeah, that's, yeah, I meant, it's <clears throat> Oh, I mean, I just tell them it's for me. They'll do what they should do. Define All right. what they should do. Whatever we tell them. The gods. They shouldn't be misleading. So, you guys prepare yourselves. You guys gather the carriage, and you guys head to Alberzine. Well, that is not too bad. You guys actually make it there a little bit earlier, about five, six hours. Um, you guys gather yourselves, and you see the Alberzine wall start approaching. You notice that Grendridge is literally, visually kind of shaken as he knows that He's probably in for a shitload of trouble. Or something. He kind of turns around. He takes a deep breath. All right. We're going to go across the bridge. And then we're going to be at the walls. I'll tell them that I'm not armed. You guys can have my sword. 
And I'll just tell them that I'm here, and we'll see what happens. And it takes side next to the reins, and he sits up front. You guys traverse forward. About 10, 20 minutes more go by. You guys approach the front gate. You notice that there are guards manning the front gate. And as you approach, you see he kind of stands up from the front of the carriage, Grendridge. As it kind of stops about 50, 60 feet from the front two doors, he steps out of the carriage. You see two guards. Halt! He makes his way forward. Be easy! It is I. I've come to turn myself in. I know that the capital and many have been presumably looking for me, but um, I do not wish to cause any more or any further issues. You see two guards, they start making their way down. The council has been looking for you, Grendridge. They have many questions and then they look past him towards the carriage. As well as the individuals you have been traveling with. We've had distant word, but we'll let the council deal with you. There's a certain council member that I'm sure you can be seen by now. The rest of you, as you guys are in the carriage, you see two guards approaching. You all will be brought in with him. You will be asked some basic questions. You are not under suspicion as of now. Though traveling with him, we will know and want to know what you have been doing with the general. Please lower your arms and come with us under easy terms. You guys do so we'll take it easy on you but more so after the general things have been happening in Abazine and we need answers now as they approach and they say this do you guys do anything they kind of walk up to the horse they pat it make your way inside the gates and then disembark your carriage we will escort you where you need to go. Don't try anything funny, please. Let's just have a decent day now, shall we? You see both of them kind of turn their back and lead the horse. The two doors to Alberzine open. Your carriage makes its way in. Then after about a hundred feet stops and the door is behind it and you see Grandridge just visibly, visibly sweating. As he looks around, you guys got my back. Right? Yep. Alright. You notice after a few moments, the guards come forward. They take Grendridge and they lock him in cuffs. And they put him behind. Just for safekeeping. And then they escort the rest of you guys out of the carriage. You guys you make, make sure that this little girl gets home safe. Little, and then they look inside. Why, yes. What is your name? And she says... Talia, from Endel's Academy, sir, and my room is the fourth quarter in the third district up. You see Grendridge, make sure she makes her way home safely, please. Regardless of my doings, make sure she's safe. You see one of the guards, now you see six. You see one of them split off, they take her and she gathers her things and she looks at you. Thank you again. I can only repay you, hopefully, with my gratitude. Good luck in whatever ventures you have forward, and hopefully I'll see you in the future. Here with a guard, get escorted off and out of view as she walks through part of the city. You guys now being escorted with Grendridge by five guards, as they are walking behind you with one leading. Now, as you guys shall know... Certain questions need to be answered. We're going to separate you from Grendridge and ask you all some certain questions. Do not lie. We are keeping record of all of this. We have had certain professors come up missing and die recently. 
certain explosions within the town that have been unanswered. And we have had a member of the Council of Collective, a Denistina Law, almost killed. Denistina's alive? As you say that, yes. Barely. Thank God. Awesome. I like that guy. Over the last two weeks, he's recovered and he is in some sort of mechanical chair, though. Okay. He's been Better disabled and, uh, though he is still alive, though we have him in captivity, the last one that we have seen him on the scene at Vault's Manor. But we cannot say any more until we are within close quarters. After a few more moments, you guys are escorted about. 15 minutes walking through the city where you guys are taken to a section and then separated from Grendridge. You guys are taken into a room where all of you are sat in a room with an individual. I think I just turned on my alarm in the car. Sounds like something. We're good, we're good. You see <laughs> this individual sitting inside. You guys wait for about 15 minutes. You see him sitting at a very high stature table with a chair that seems to be very ornate and elegant. You see guards lining the room. You see him as you guys enter and then take a seat. One moment, we wait for General Grendry. You guys wait about an hour. Not saying anything, just sitting there. After about an hour, you see Grendridge make his way into this room. As you do so, you see this man sitting before you. Now that you guys sit and wait as Grendridge enters, you see Grendridge. <laughs> Renor! I should have fucking known it'd be you that would be judging me. All right, so how's it going to be? You gonna shake me down like you do everyone else? Or are you gonna give me a fair reason trial? As you see now, this one individual sitting, obviously some sort of council or government member of Alberzine sits before him. Yes. I've been sent by the Red Council to set down a ruling on their behalf for you. You are to be taken and prosecuted. You are going to be stripped of your titles and you will no longer operate as a general within the lands of Hexwell or anywhere else. You will pay a fine or you will have your life debted instead. You see Grinders, look. What is the fine? I would rather pay it than have my head taken. It says it shall be 15,000 gold pieces. That shall be paid to the families that were slaughtered upon your escape of Padre with certain individuals that are yet still anonymous to us. For the doings, gold shall be sent as payment to those that were lost in the duty of the prison. See him kind of sit behind and Grendridge just kind of sits there and then kind of looks at you. All right, strip me of my titles. Take me of whatever else you want. Give me this fine. How long do I have to pay it? You see, Yuan kind of sifts through a couple pieces of paper. It is to be paid immediately. Or you are to be imprisoned and taken. If the payment cannot be made... And have your head instead. As the families are willing to do with an execution within the first day of your arrival if we were able to find you. And since you have presented yourself, we have decided and I'd pay that this would be the next, well, next easily done task to give the families resting pieces. Now, you have traveled with these individuals for the last three weeks. And we wonder why you have done so. He turns and he looks at you and then he looks back. I've done nothing. I've taken them under... And he kind of ponders. I threatened them, actually. They weren't working for me. They were afraid of me. 
I told them that uh, if they didn't do what I told them, I'd kill them all and I'd turn them into the Red Council. You see you on turn back. Typical. An egotistical general like yourself. You wait another few seconds and then the door opens once again and you see Denistine being wheeled in. Burnt his legs and most of his arms and appendages basically not working. He kind of turns and he looks at you. This individual says that uh, you had nothing to do with this as Yulon looks at the rest of you. He says that um, we have the wrong individuals and that the reason why Denistine was there was to check on a Miss Vault after her protest that happened in the center of Albazin. He says that he was the only one there and he was there to check out some sort of mischief that he thought may have been going on. Is that correct? As you all looks amongst you all. Uh, is Denistine doing anything specific? What's Denistine doing? Staring straight forward. Just kind of not saying anything. Kind of poker face, you know. Can I For... insight what the ju- judge just checked? See if they're trying to bull- bullshit me here? Yeah. Mm. There it is. 14 total. To be what you can tell, being pretty straightforward. So, what were your doings over the last three weeks with this Mr. Grandridge? Supposedly, you are not. I say a part of this explosion that happened in Awazine, going by Mr. Lois' testimony. I want to hear your testament now. What is your statements? In regards to the last three weeks, uh, outside of any explosion, uh, we were in the contraband's hold, where we started about three weeks ago. Kind of sits back in his chair. Grandridge kind of just looks at you for a moment, stares back, eyes kind of widen for a moment. What were you doing there? We were intimidated. Hmm. Grendridge had business. Kind of looks back at Grendridge. And Grendridge, what were you doing in the Contravance Holt? Oh, I was meeting up with my girlfriend. We were shagging down, of course, you know, and, uh, Hmm, your girlfriend, kind of, Brendridge sits back. Your girlfriend, the one that stole the airship, that the rocks have taken prisoner. The airship that was run to the ground, killing almost the entirety of the crew and almost a town that it ran into. That one. He grinders just kind of shifting on both of his feet. Yeah, that one. Ex-girlfriend, I guess you'd say. But, uh, yeah. I had some business, and, um... See you on. And the business was breaking you out of Padre Prison, wasn't it? We know that you head there. And that was the last time you were seen by any of your guardsmen. He looks around the room. Maybe. But who's to say that's right? No one knows after I left these walls. You see you want to sift through some more papers. The event at Padre is not just a coincidence. I know you had something to do with it. Whether or not you shall speak up. Something is going on here, and I do not know what. As this individual male, just bald-headed and older, looks around. 
Grundridge, you are no longer welcome here. I feel like if I imprison you, it shall do nothing more than to just rot away a soul that has given us many good years, and I shall give you at least that respect, even though I know you are lying to me. The rest of you. You. As it looks right at you, Gildor. What have you been doing in the Contravents Holt with Grendridge? He said there was business. What was this business? Well, there were these cultists and then a giant plant monster that mauled our friend Parrot. And why were you there? But why was he wanting to go there? You're dodging the question. The same Cassandra Bolt meaning to me? As you say that, you mean the manor that exploded a couple weeks back. So you know the name. How do you know I mean, Cassandra Volt? Long. As you say that, <laughs> he literally shifts back. <laughs> Who is this Orm? One of your members, as you raise your hand. You have direct relationship with Cassandra Volt. We were estranged for a number of years. When was the last time you saw her? In the contraband's Holt. I killed her. How was that? When was this? Approximately three, almost four weeks ago. A long trip. He sits back. Hmm. He became a dragon. If what you tell me is true and that she lived beyond the explosion, then what was the body that we found? He looks around the room. Nobody has an answer. There was a firing minotaur in there. Oh no, this was a humanoid. There was a body. It looked to be a female, similar to Cassandra, and you're telling me that that was not her. I mean, to be fair, you're assuming that we were anywhere near this manor. I'm assuming since you know her that you might know what happened to her. And if you're hanging out with this individual, as she, as he points to Grendridge, then yeah, I think you all might know something more than you're leading on. And if I have explosions going on within these walls, one of my head professors coming up missing and we think is dead and you're telling me she's not dead and has left the city and you have killed her in the contravance halt. I ask you why. Why shall I not imprison you all right now? As we've said, the cultists in the contraband's hold. You called it. Doing what? I'm gonna name the Fire Lord or something? Give me a persuasion check. Sure. Fire Lord. What is this? I don't know why. Why don't we, if we're gonna have to play the convincing party about what we're saying in truth, we're in like, Hexwell. Like, why don't we just have someone, why don't, do you have anybody that knows how to cast Zone of Truth on all of us, and then question us? As you say that, and you then, see and then, Dennis then, still... then you get all the information without a shadow of a doubt, and I don't have to feel guilty about attempting to lie. As you're saying this, you just see Dennis saying he kind of wheels his chair forward on his own. Seems wheeled and magically attuned by something moving. He wheels about five feet forward. <clears throat> I blew up her mansion. Sandra Volt was up to something preposterous. And I did it. They had nothing to do with it. They were completely under the implications of General Grundridge. Rip him of his titles. Take me of the Council of Collective. 
I no longer shall take my reins and I shall take whatever punishment the council rains down. T. Wu Yuan kind of sits back in his chair and kind of looks around. Mr. Law, you are the one who has taken this into your own hands. Why? She was corrupt. Was spewing nonsense to the young students and the professors of Albazine and of the academies. Do whatever you are going to do with the punishments and give it to me. Do you want to sit back for about a minute or two pondering? Your age, Dennis Dean. Putting you in prison shall do nothing. You shall die in there, and that will do nothing. You've led the council for many years, and the Red Council will not wish to see you go. But, with what has transpired, not happen. Not have you in a place of power. Grandridge, Dennistein. Both of you shall be exiled of Albazine. Indefinitely. You are to be stripped of all titles, of all land, and of all possessions left behind as of this moment forward. You are not to return back to your estates. You are not to return back to any manners of which you own or have habitated previously. You are to leave immediately. I need to speak with these individuals a little bit longer. <coughs> Excuse me. Bless you. <coughs> Again. Thank you. Welcome. Uh, I shall need to speak with you a little longer. As I have further questions that myself and the headmaster need to know. We have noticed you have attended the academies here once before, and we have records of a certain Gildor. Yo. Yes, you had an incident here at one point. That seems to be very pertinent to the headmaster. He wishes to meet with you, as well as the rest of your party members, as soon as possible. He says he has, uh, many things to discuss with you, and wishes for you all to meet with him at his quarters at the earliest convenience. He kind of looks around, and then he stands up. This is... something that, um... I do not wish to always do. But know that myself, Benor Yulan, council member of Albazine, give my ruling. And as I do, they are to be banished you four to stay here for at least the next two days. And there's a penalty that I shall say of 400 gold that remains on top of Grendridge's head as a bounty. If it is not paid within a month, we shall send wardens to collect. You see Grendridge just turns. Thank you, council member. Thank you, Dynasty. Not understand how much I thank you. You barely hear him say it underneath his breath, and Yulan does not hear this. You see guards come and take Denisine and take him out of the smallish room. As you guys are sitting there. Now, the headmaster shall be meeting with us soon. I've called for a meeting now that I have your presence. So, might want to have your stories in line with what you've been doing recently. 
uh, I have a question. Is this conversation uh, going to be a formal uh, conversation as a judge and a headmaster? Or are we individuals trying to Oh, it will be a collective. You all will be presented before the headmaster with a judge. And he will ask for your testimony of whatever he asks. Then may we call in an associate? Who? Uh, Orlando. As you say this name, Arlon. As you say this name, the heretic. No. She shall not be present during this. What's that? Is it not, let's say, intertwined with this issue, unless you know something I do not know? What has happened at the manor? Denistine takes credit. Yeah. But why you have traveled with Grendridge? That has nothing to do with it. It does not, but the headmaster thinks otherwise. His questions may lead you to know what he inquires further. I do not know. Mm. That is why you must meet with him. Now, as you see guards start leading Grendridge and Denisine out, you see Grendridge, I'll head back, as he says over his shoulders. You know where I'll go. I'll make my way back towards the place you know. See Dennisine as he just exits, he's wheeled outside and he just sits there. You guys wait for a moment. Can we ask if Dennison no? Well, you guys are actually as you guys sit there, you guys are escorted just outside. You see, after a few moments, Grendridge has left, and now Dennisine and you guys sit there. As you guys sit there waiting for your next meeting with the headmaster, Dennisine sits there as you see two guards standing in front of you. About 20 feet off, Dennisine kind of leans over. So, we should probably be as nice to this headmaster and get out of this in some sort of way as fast as possible. Don't give up too much information. I've been working with the certain shadow council in Albazine. He is someone we do not wish to divulge any knowledge to. As he says this, you see the two guards kind of lean forward and everybody stops talking. And then after a moment, they kind of rest and then Dennisine leans back in. We need to keep what we know close to our chests. The Red Council knows more than they should. As you wait a few more moments, about an hour passes. You see the two guards lean forward and then open a door. Well, <clears throat> seems that the headmaster is ready for you. As he opens the door, you see Yulan walking forward. And I'll be the judge. He walks in. That's where we're getting into today's session. You guys picking up next time. Uh, we're pretty fucked. With this meeting with the headmaster. I don't think we're going to go live the headmaster. Of magic and that's where we'll meet up. There's like no way a zone of truth isn't going to be used. So, that's where we'll pick up next week. Good session. You can't lie to Dumbledore. <laughs> well, that and the only character that would be eloquent enough to talk in half truths to get.